Welcome to Karate Combat 38. My name is Boss Wooten, and we are in the futuristic Miami. And look who cannot get enough from Karate Combat that our own. Steven, what a boy, Thompson. You know, Boss, I love being here, and I love this card. I mean, the feature battle is going to be just amazing. We have Bruno Assist versus Bruno Souza. And if my calculations are correct, there's a 100% chance that Bruno's going to win. And then we get the main fight, main card. We have, obviously, Ross Levine versus the Castaneda. And statistically speaking, this is probably going to be one of the most exciting rematches in Karate Combat history. Wow, way to take the entire opening away oh, from me, Steven. I'm sorry. Thank you, but you did a really great thank job. You, thank thank you. you so much. I hope you studied hard. Just a little bit. Oh, thank you very much. So let me introduce you to the rest of the crew. Steven and I will be joining George Palmer in the commentating booth. Then we have the lovely Leila Annalise. She's walking around and she's interviewing the fighters. The lovely Alex Wendling is here. Ooh. And she's the roving reporter on the side. And last but not least, our gullible, our cute, our, our, our knowledgeable Robin Black, who will break down all the action for us. I love the cast. I love the card. And hey, we're about to get started. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do this. Do it. Three, two, one. Throw that preview. Whoa. We're going to start up the season with a super strong card. We have a title match on our hands, and it happens to be a rematch. Oh. Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. Both these guys fought each other before. Spinning wheel kick to the head. Ross Levin and Igor de Castaneda. They were very pronto. Claro, they were very much. He was hurt. Bruno Souza is facing Bruno Assis, two of the top guys in the division. I am the real Bruno, and I approve it. I don't have to say that I'm the real Bruno. I just know it. Who is the real Bruno? I'm going to find out. Sasha Palatnikov versus Adrian Hadribas. I'm really looking forward to this one, Judge. James Wick versus Gabriela Chera. Yes, hello and welcome to Karate Combat 38. We are live from Miami, Florida. Thank you very much for joining us. We're happy to be here for a couple of events to kick off our 2023 season. Guys, thank you for that fantastic introduction at the top of the pit. That's amazing. That's it. You just did it on the fly. Whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. We, we, well, don't, we don't need any practice. Well, Bass, we got uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson back with us. Uh, Wonderboy, how you, how you hanging? How you happy to be here? Oh, dude, I'm excited to be here. Always a pleasure hanging out with you guys. And of course, the fans here at Karate Combat. To be able to come out here, hang out with y'all, and see some crazy fights, it's awesome. Bass, we got a, a pretty nifty environment going on right now. It is, it is. You know, we're in the future in Miami. So for your people at home who live in Miami, this is what's going to look like in about 20 years from now. <laughs> it's nice to be dressed accordingly as well. <laughs> look at this, we pick those outfits. Uh, That's guys, right. Nine fights on the card tonight. Some quick word about the, the two at the top. Uh, main event tonight, of course, it is that title fight. Ross Levine taking on Igor de Castaneda. It's a little bit different when you've already fought someone once for a title fight, right? It's always like that. Yeah, the, the, the pressure is on. But this is all about stamina as well. Igor de Castaneda, he's got incredible power, a lot of power, but with a lot of power comes also not only great responsibility, but also you need a full gas tank. Can he go the distance? That's the trick. Ross Levine, of course, he's all over the place. It's very hard to lock him up in any corner. The guy is just a machine, so I'm really looking forward to see what's going to happen this time. Yeah, and of course, again, feature about tonight, Battle of the Brunos. Um, but that's really where the similarities end. They're two kind of different fighters, really. Exactly. Man, I mean, you got both of these guys who are, you know, at the top of their game. It's like a flip of the coin to see who wins at this level. It's hard to think who's going to be the most active, who's, whose mind is right during the fight game or during the during the bout. So, you know, it's like I said, it's like a, it's a, it's a flip of the coin. Yep. Okay, well, they're the two at the top of the card. We, of course, have got seven other bouts on tonight's card for you. Let's go ahead, throw up that fight card graphic and walk you through the rest of tonight's action. So top of tonight's card is that title defense in the middleweight division. Champion Ross Levine aims to score his second victory over the challenger Igor de Castaneda. Before that, a feature bout between two Brazilians, but two namesakes. It's the Battle of the Bruno, Souza versus Assis. Intriguing middleweight bout, Sasha Politnikov returns to face the Albanian debutant Adriano Adrubai. Out with something to prove, James Vick goes up against the tough Italian Gabriele Cella at welterweight. One ladies bout on tonight's card, it's a bantamweight clash between Brazilian 
Erika Santos and Hungarian Melinda Fabian. And rounding out some of our earlier fights tonight, we've got Josehine Rind at uh, Gabo Diaz at lightweight, Kenji Grion facing George Perez at welterweight, potentially wicked battle of the kickers between Lavoie and Villa at bantamweight. And we're going to open up tonight's card with two veteran welterweights, David Donner and Dionisio Gustavo. Uh, guys, quick word about this first bout coming up. Um, two guys very, very similar, perhaps getting a little bit veteran stage of their career. Both coming off losses, looking for something to prove, and, and coming, perhaps saying they're still relevant. Uh, sorry, you. David Donner, I'm, I'm trying uh, first up. David Donner, first of all, he trains with Rafael Agaev. He's the GOAT. The guys fought each other in the last match, and then they decided to start training together. Ooh. So I'm pretty sure that he learned some of his little tricks there is. He says that Gustavo is strong, but he says, I'm much faster. And the game plan is going to be, he was going to set up his kicks with his hands, and he's going to counter the straight punches that Gustavo throws, because apparently they're really, really good. Yeah, Dini so Gustavo, uh, again, another guy getting up there in age, but both these guys just ripped, like, still in for the fight, still relevant, still competing. It's fantastic. Age is just a number, just throwing that out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For my man Gustavo, he's feeling great. The game plan is to counter Donna's right hook. He's using his hands to set up that mean, nasty liver kick, and he's been working really hard on his left hand because everyone expects him to throw his right. Oh. Excellent. So, first bout coming up. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the rules of the pin. Karate combat. Our scoring system is uniquely based on the principles of karate. Effective striking, effective takedowns, aggressiveness, and defense. Meaning that if a fight is close and it's up to the judges to decide, the fighter who drove the action wins. Fighters also encouraged to use our specially designed 45 degree angled pit walls to their advantage. Fighters cannot use knees or elbows and only five seconds of ground and pound is allowed. All bouts tonight are taking place over three three minute rounds, unless they need to go to an overtime round, and we'll talk about that a bit later. If it's a title fight, it's five three minute rounds. And of course, a rules update for the last couple of shows, knees to the body and head are now allowed. Dionisio Gustavo versus David Dona. This is the fight of the real veterans. These guys were there at the very first Ooh. events. They were the top dogs. Both guys had wins, but they had more losses. Now, they are fighting for to stay in the league. It's a survival fight. From the outside. Our first bout tonight is a welterweight contest. Fighting tonight out of the blue corner from the Dominican Republic. Welcome, El Capitan Dionisio Gustavo. Dionisio Gustavo from the Dominican Republic, 40 years old is this young man. Looking to bounce back from a unanimous decision loss against uh, arguably the GOAT, Rafael Agaev, in the finale of Karate Combat Season 4. That was June of last year, so uh, about seven or eight months off for him. Stayed in shape. Stayed and ready. his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is the Hurricane, Davy Dona! A man we've seen uh, four previous times, or five, I think, previous times here on Karate Combat. Davy the Hurricane Donna from France, 41 years old. Are you done for a bit here? He's got a bit of an advantage in overall yeah. power and speed. Be interesting to see if he can put that into play tonight. He said he's been looking to strike in much bigger combinations this evening than we've seen previously. Less single shots. Let's go ahead and have a look at the tail of the tape for this one. El Capitan, Dinicio Gustavo from the Dominican Republic. Standing five foot nine, weighed in at 164. And his opponent, Davy Donner. You can see they're very, very similar indeed. A couple of inches shorter, but not really losing out on the arm or leg reach at all. You notice both these guys coming off losses, really looking to try and fight for survival here at Karate Combat. <coughs> Your referee for this opening bout is Mr. Mark Goddard. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. 
Kawasi Combat 38 is powered by Hedera. Three three-minute rounds on the clock to start us off here tonight in Miami. Thank you very much for joining us. Josh Palmer, Bas Rutten, and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Pit side here for you tonight. Touch of gloves and we're underway. Ooh, good leg inside. Good kick from Donna. Donna in the black pants. Gustavo in the white. Ooh, that was nice. That I kick it across. Yeah. Use that low leg, leg kick to set it up. Yeah, slightly lower, wider stance. But you see both of them with that, that traditional karate posture. Really uh, slanted one leg forward. Looking to blitz. Ooh, across. That's a nice combination. The Dominican driving forward. Gustavo blitzing him to the ring. Very difficult to get up from there. Both guys in a closed stance right now, feeling each other out first round. He's using that low kick right into, into his shin. Oh, and that's a good left hook. That nice. found the mark. Stumbles the Frenchman briefly. And they've got to watch those those kicks. You cannot kick between Ooh. the knee and the hip oh. in karate combat. Remember, it's got to be below the knee or to the upper body and the head. Gustavo connected one time with that left punch. You remember he said in the opening, or he said in the opening he worked on his left hand and yes. it connected. So we're about halfway through the opening round here and it's <laughs> a big right hand from the Frenchman goes awry. I feel like a lot of these guys are waiting for the other, right? I think a good reason, a good way to kind of to draw your opponent out is a lot of feints and more feints from these guys to draw his opponent's techniques and then counter that feint. Yeah, Gustavo said uh, in, in some of his pre-fight interviews that you know he knew he would have to watch out for a big wild right hand. He's done a good job so far of avoiding that. Great so jab hand again. Yep. Yeah, great jab from Gustavo. He's using that low calf kick. He wants to use it. He's not. Not a real powerful technique, but he's saying, hey, you know, I'm touching you down here. Kind of distract him a little bit. And there again is that red hand, and that's a nice yeah, seal and a, a little counter. And again, just bigger combinations from Gustavo. Five, four, Getting that ground five seconds of ground a pound. One, Oh, that was interesting, using the knee to pin the wrist there at the end. I love it. I know, I haven't seen that before. So reminder, they have five seconds to land ground and pound. They can have the knee on the ground immediately adjacent oh. on top of the that. opponent. Like the rock and suck yeah, Nice uppercut. Nice okay. okay. Yeah. Good short shots on the inside. We can, of course, use knees in karate combat now, but you can pull a fighter onto a knee, but at the time the knee makes contact, you cannot be holding them with your hands. Ten seconds left in the opening round here. Oh, a little switch in size over here from Gustavo. We haven't seen. Yeah, not really putting it to use at the end, but just throwing it out there, giving Donna something to think about. Thoughts on the opening round, gentlemen? Mm, it's just the feeling out process, yes. right? Not super exciting yet. Uh, they're figuring out the, 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 the reach of each other, I guess. You know, I think that uh, Donna's loading up a little bit. He really wants to hurt him, so he's telegraphing. He's got to watch out for that. And uh, Dionisio needs to be a little faster at this moment. I agree. I think I think both of these guys are, like you said, the filling out process. But you've got to draw out your opponent's strikes. They're both looking to counter strike each other. So you need to start throwing more feints yep. to draw out your partner's uh, technique and then counter that. So there we saw an example of attempted big right hand. These were the, uh, the short shots in the clinch at the end. Almost looked like Gustavo wanted to throw a knee, but he knew <laughs> he had him in the clinch, so it was illegal. So. Nice that he didn't do it. So both men in phenomenal shape, expecting them to remain calm after that opening round. A lot of ground and pound in that first round. I like it. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm just impressed we saw somebody use the knee to, to pin the hand. So <laughs> we, we haven't seen it at all yet in karate combat. The evolution has started. Mark Goddard getting us underway for the second round. Dionisio right away stands at the south ball now. So it's an open stance here. Yeah, see who fights for the outside foot position. Yes. Pretty, pretty sure Donna's not going to throw an inside low kick because that's how he broke his shin the very first time he fought Ooh, here. But of course, we know that Donna has got that big right hand and, and Gustavo wants to watch out for that. And switching stance, does that open him up a bit more to that power side? It does. Like you said, it's whoever, whoever wins the outside position, I think, is going to have the most powerful right. 
But again, he's switching sides because he's been working really hard on that left hand. So we'll see what, it, what, what that left hand is capable of in this round. But now if he jabs with his right hand, he can be countered with a cross by Dona, so he's gotta watch out for that. Then again, he can do the same thing to Dona. Right. Do Dona yeah. had said to us that he felt he was too reactive in his last bout, and that he wanted to uh, be more aggressive, push forward first, but he seems to be the one Holding, yeah. going backwards a little bit here. Yeah, he needs to go attack. If you notice, uh, Dona though, he's moving the correct way. Well, now that he switched sides, but when you're in the open stance, you wanna circle away from that power, the power hand. Yeah, the power kick. A little check of that lead leg. That's nice to the solar plexus. Would have been great to follow it up with the cross. Now, obviously, aggressiveness is uh, the name of the game here at Karate Combat. You've got to be effective with your striking, but you've also got to be aggressive. So pushing forward consistently is certainly going to work uh, in Gustavo's favor with the judges here pit side. It's weird. They're very close to each other. Am I crazy? <laughs> it's very close. Yeah. yeah. It's like almost a boxing match. That's how close they are. Yes. Somebody's got to close that gap. There we go. There we go, double up cut. Oh. So putting himself three, off balance a little bit with two, the Frenchman. One. Good work again from Gustavo. They started to pick up some speed now. Nice. Oh, nice jab cross from Gustavo. Ding, ding. More of that, please, more of that. <laughs> oh, oh, both bobbing and weaving, ducking and diving, but uh, <laughs> tying up here. Every time when he comes in with the cross, he steps in too deep, so he's yes. kind of jamming his punch, so it takes the power out. If he stays at the same spot, it will be made more effective. Oh, that was nice. nice. Just above the knee, though. Are you surprised they're not a, a little bit more at range here? As you said, they're almost touching lead hands. Yeah. They're very close. I have no clue how that's even possible because they're great kickers, both of them, but they're using their hands. Too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and these, these guys this. aren't moving a whole lot. They're kind of standing right in front of each other. So every little movie they make, their opponents react to it. Yeah. So what you've got to do, you have to constantly be moving to disguise that initial movement of coming in. It makes it a little bit harder to see. And also what they're doing, they're going straight back and straight forward. There's no angling when they're moving back. And exactly. That's, right, that's we're not seeing angles, cut off shots. We're not seeing too much circular movement. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. That was uh, a lone body shot from Gustavo. Yeah, and that with the power lag there, the liver kick, that was nice. There's a double uppercut coming, one and two. Oh. Oof, yeah, and a hook, nice. I like the double uppercut with the liver shot. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of people expect that thing. you got to say, it probably feels like the Dominican is, is getting the better of this fight so far. It's not by a huge margin, but it's probably by enough. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's inching it out, that's for sure. That was a nice low kick by uh, Dona as well. And they, it's more speed. The second round, they had more speed, so that's nice mm -hmm. to see. So if you're in the corner of Davy Dona right now, what are you telling him? Go. Attack. <laughs> and when you move back, <laughs> side to side. Here we go, round three, baby. Third and final round on the clock. Way! Again, Way! simultaneous change of level. Way! Oh, going for a big throw. <laughs> <laughs> the referee trying to break them up here. Should go for a guillotine. Okay, okay. Listen to me. Separate. You cannot hold in here. Do you understand? No more warnings. Out to the middle. Yeah, so you can throw those short shots on the inside, but um, you can't do the old full-on dirty boxing technique. Come on, man. Sometimes you got to just grit yeah. your teeth and go. Yeah. These three minute rounds go very, very yes. fast. We're already down through a third of it. You got to clinch that mouthpiece, bite down, and go. And especially, it's up for grabs right now. I mean, stop. Stop. Oh. oh. That was really after that. Yeah, that was. Oh, oh wow. Yes. And that's a quick point, point taken point. away from the freshman. And I got to well, say, he said, no, time. stop. Yeah, it's it's a very, very, very clear. You know, I mean, we're pit stop. side here. Yeah, we can stop. hear it. Let's stop. take a quick look at the replay. You stop. You stop. You understand? Not again. And it was right at the end. Now, luckily, that right. didn't land completely clean. 
But, um, well, this this kind of sets it for me. If you're David Honor now, you know you're oh, yeah. behind. Yep. 100%. Yep. He needs to go. Nice little jab. Now, now what you got to do with, with Gustavo, using that jab, what reaction did he do? Now, oh. Well, a little bit more emphasis in the ground and pound there. Yep. Moving towards the final minute of this opening bout. Ooh, nice inside leg kick there. By Donna. Well, Donna is the one in the center of the pit now, the one pressing forward. It's good to see, but could be too little, too late. <laughs> Big flurry, nice body kick. Again, throwing to the body. He's got, oh, and that's a that lovely nice. attempt. That was smart, though. Yeah, pull the leg out, off balance him. Can you grab the gee pads at the bottom? You cannot, no, but oh, you can grab no, the heel. That would be cool. Grab the, the heel and pull them out. Pull, like an ankle pick, but then with the leg. Absolutely. <laughs> Separate. Come out, come out, come out. 20 seconds. Yeah, last flurry coming. Well, you can't commit both hands to a double leg like that, so I'm curious what the tactic is. But what it has done is burn more time off the clock for the Dominican here. Again, trying to hold and punch. Got to be careful. Ooh. Well, world flurries at the end. Is going to see this one go to the judges' decision. <laughs> Crowd showing their appreciation, getting warmed up here. Probably David. Yeah, I know. He's 41, but he's a killer. Chef. It'll be blue, pretty sure. You want a winner in Sega? So some final replays here, guys, of yeah, that third I'm, and I'm final ready, round. Guys, I'll be in my Give spot. us your closing thoughts as we await the judges' decision. Uh, let them know I'll be in my spot. Well, I think Gustavo came out now this yeah. time, and I think that got him in the round two, especially with the point taken away. Yes. So he might take the win today. He was the aggressor. He was the one moving forward and kept, you know, uh, his opponent on the outside of the center of that of that uh, of the pit. So, uh, I, I, for sure, I think Gustavo's got it. Yeah, it was nice to see Gustavo throw those body kicks at the end. And it was also nice to see, he probably knew he might be ahead. He didn't back away, he didn't just run away, circle out. He, he kept pushing yeah, forward, kept way. trying to take Either the win. Way. It's nice work from the Dominican. Take yep. Sure, yeah. Sure, we'll just head over there. So, we are waiting pit side to render the judges' decision. Lots more action to come. Of course, top of the card, that title bout. Igor de Castaneda trying to dethrone the champion, back, Ross yeah. Levine. We'll have to get to that stand. Got blue winner. I got you open, Drew. It'll be blue. So we bring them down pit side. We're going to render the judges' decision here. Mark Goddard brings up the center. Let's go ahead and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Out of the blue corner, El Capitan Dionisio Gustavo. So Dionisio Gustavo from the Dominican Republic is going to take this one out. He's going to improve like his karate combat here, record. Up. A bit back, a bit back closer to even. Bruce Mike is open. Bruce Mike is open. To the crowd there, waiting. The Castaneda supporters waiting for the main event later. We're bringing out Pit Mike. And Deniso Gustavo is going to get a word pit side with our co-host. Deniso, how are you? Layla. Some words exchanged there. Do you mind telling me what was said? <laughs> Yeah, I feel good. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your support. 
Eh, el capitán es Higgard. Man. Yeah. It seemed like a tough exchange. You were finding your range. You were you were quite powerful there, but you weren't quite finding where you wanted to go. Am I right? Que no estabas encontrando lo que estabas buscando cuando estabas peleando. Como que estabas buscando algo, pero te te costó un poquito. Sí, estaba buscando el knockout. Yo sé que tengo la fuerza para el knockout, pero el oponente parece que tiene quijadura y no lo puede noquear. My respect for my opponent. <laughs> what happened, man? What happened, bro? He was looking for the knockout, but uh, he knows that he has the power to knock him out. But his opponent was strong, and he has a lot of respect for him. And Davey joins us now. You seem to have something to say. Yes, please, uh, my coach, Jirul. We'll need to make it quick for the broadcast, my friend. I'm very, 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 uh, comment on appelle? Bienvenue mon petit podcast, Plus vite, s'il vous plaît. Vraiment déçu, parce que le combat, le combat, sincèrement, je pense que tout le monde l'a vu, tout le public a vu. Et le public, il était unanime. Il sait, il sait, it was a good fight, but he's very disappointed. But uh, for him, it's a good fight. It with sounds it. like there's yes. some stuff you guys need to put to bed later on. But thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank one you. Moment, one moment. Yep. I like to say that fighting is a metaphor for life itself. And when you look at this fight, it was very chaotic, very fragmented and frenzied. And in circumstances like that, it's about controlling your own behavior. Davy Donna lost control for a moment. That cost him that key point. And that key point might have made all the difference. They say often that the real fight is against oneself. That was a wonderful contest from two great karatekas. Thank you both for that fight. So guys, closing thoughts on that opening by uh, opening bout. A um, little bit cagey, a little bit time yep. to get going, yeah. never really finding the rhythm perhaps. Yeah, distance was off. Uh, I think a lot of pressure on both of them. You know, because they came off losses, and I think that uh, maybe got inside in their heads. You know, but at least yeah. the speed started picking up, so that was good. Yeah, both guys a little sporadic out there. You could tell they were just both waiting on each other. Yep. Um, when they should have just grit their teeth and got out there and just got after it. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, it's good first bout in the car. A lot more action coming your way. Let's go ahead and join uh, Layla, who's got a preview of our feature bout. In our featured bout tonight, it's all the Brunos, the battle of the Brunos. Bruno Jesses takes on Bruno de Souza, a former UFC fighter who's looking to get a little more comfortable in his second outing in the pit. Bruno Jesses, however, is looking to get back in the win column. Both of them have been really pally to each other all week. May the best Bruno win. The Battle of the Brunos. Aziz versus Sousa. I am the real Bruno. It's my name. Bruno is one of the best guys in the division. Brazilians are fighters by nature. You can expect a lot of aggression on this fight. Every little movement is calculated out there. I'm prepared to fight against the best fighters in the world. Let's see if the dragon's gonna eat again and stay hungry. He's one of the most experienced guys, but I've been fighting everybody. They are fearless, relentless, and they go forward, and they want to finish their opponent. Nobody's going to back up. I fight for knockout every time. And this fight is not different. I'm just ready to knock him out. What about we have got coming up later in the, uh, the feature? This evening, looking forward to that. Uh, next up, Damien Villa and uh, Robbie Lavoie are going to go toe to toe. Really interesting bout mm -hmm. of, uh, of two kickers here. And Robbie Lavoie from Canada, he's got that viral hi hi highlight knockout as he returns to karate combat for the second time. Yeah, he's doing uh, really good. He felt that he did okay last time. Uh, he said the pit was different. He says it's also weird to see the people in the end uh, behind him. It's like almost like a street fight. And then he said he started to feel gas. So this time he comes up with a boatload of stamina. He said, 
says he's got a supporter has got great kicks, but he worked on countering those kicks. Yeah, and of course his opponent tonight, Damien Villa, a uh, taekwondo specialist primarily alongside his karate background. So we really expect some fast feet there. Yeah, both guys, like you said, have got great strikes, great kickers. From a man Villa, he actually worked very hard on a variety of kicks. And of course, he wants to keep his opponent at bay because his, guy, his opponent is very good in the clinch. Yeah, lots to look forward to. This is your second bout of the evening. Damien Villa taking on Robbie Lavoie. The Bantam wins. They have an insane style of fighting. Probably the best kickers in the league. Damien Villa is coming from a Taekwondo background, multiple times world championship medalist. Robbie Lavoie, one of the goats of the ah. sport karate circuit. No! The styles, they fight. Whose style is the better? Ladies and gentlemen, our second bout tonight is a bantamweight contest. Fighting out of the blue corner from Canada, welcome Robbie Lavois! From Canada, 36 years old in the bantamweight division. Is, you'll see in a moment, a little bit shorter here, but boy does he make it work when he gets in close, gets those legs up right to the head. Very, very high and fast, deceptive fighter to deal with. And his opponent, out of the red corner, representing the United States, he is Super Damian Villa! Uh, Damian Villa fighting out of East Los Angeles. Silver medalist at the Taekwondo World Championships back in 2009. Won the USA Nationals in 2021. Of course, that's alongside a Pretty extensive uh, karate background as well. Tell the tape for this one in the blue corner, Robbie Lavoie. There you see his record 1 and 0. Last time out, taking out uh, Max LaRosa. And Super Damien Villa, 32 years old, that 1 and 1 record. You'll see there, 5 foot 6, taller of the two fighters, both weighing in very close to that bantamweight 1 at 35 limit. Your, refer your referee for this one is Wayne Spinola. All right, fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. So the all-new Karate Combat app will launch on May the 10th. You can play to win more Karate tokens with no risk of loss, and there is no purchase required. May the 10th, the Karate Token launches. Touch of gloves underway here. And again, you see that wide stance to enable the kicks, a much greater range than we saw in that opening bout. Both of them trying to put that lead leg to work. Southpaw stance for Lavoie. This is the kind of movement oh, I'm looking for right here. This is the kind of movement, the bouncing, the control, the blitz, closing the gap, looking for the takedown. Well, Levar does a good job of getting the body lock there, putting Villa on the ground. You see the height discrepancy. Oh, oh nice yeah. cross. That was nice timing from Villa. He was landing, he was hopping on one leg. He couldn't move backwards because he's standing on one leg. Of course he get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Little chopping axe kick there. And you see immediately the emphasis on the leg strikes for this bout. Oh, good work from Levar to close the distance, the take some of the sting out of that body Am shot. To do that, to just, Which to one? Just, to just hit like the red button to like shut it down. Villa's trying to gauge that distance with that lead hand, side, keeping that front side. hand out there. Oh. So both guys with their hands lower. Now, while that doesn't protect their head, it does allow them more fast movement around the hips and the legs and helps distribute that weight up top, able to move that head a little bit faster as well. Oh, oh nice. nice cross again. Guys, what do you make of this hopping entry from Lavoie? He's tried it a couple of times now. 
You gotta watch out, you know, yeah, because man. he was balancing it's on one leg and he can't move. He can't move backwards, forward, he can't do anything. That's when he got hit. And look, the Lavoie, when he when he does close the gap, he lifts his front leg up, almost using it as a shield to close the gap. If he throws any body kicks or any spin back kicks, he's he's protected. So again, both playing this longer range we expect from oh. Oh. Nice the left hand there. Game. Barely clipped him, barely clipped Villa there. Up on when he comes in. He's gonna come in. in nice, nice. Oh, that was nice. Oh. Yeah, that little side kick could have been worse. Don't see that, bud. He's scared of that. Yoko slash Moise. <laughs> He's been the same thing back. You know, yeah. both, both these guys starting when they were tremendously nice, young. Nice. Uh, you know, you take Lavoie, for instance, 31 years of martial arts experience since he started at five years no. old. Yeah. Nice, sweet. The leg, Johnny. Yes, take the legs out. Nice little hammer fist at the end from the ball. He can't reach, he can't reach. Can a bit more movement from Lavoie, perhaps. Via switching stance to go southpaw, switch kick. He's throwing that left hand a lot, using his kicks to set it up. He's just got to get a little closer. Cut him off, cut him off. There you go. Oh, oh, nice. Hardwood score. I think I think Louval took that away just a little bit, just because he was more active. And, and mo yeah, yeah, let's let's take a look at uh, some of the replays here from that first round. As we see them heading up the side to their corners. That was the opening. The left fake with the right kick. That's the type. That's the Taekwondo style that's coming out in. And now we get the cross. Doink. So that was some of the ground and pound at the end of that first round. And it's nice to see the uh, the kicking game coming to the forefront of this bout here. Definitely makes more of a, an exciting fight, that's for sure. I want to see the double kicks, like an inside yes. low kick round, jumping the other <laughs> one. I mean, cool stuff. I mean, they can't I do mean, it. i got to say, that little uh, lead kick to then immediately re-chamber without bringing the leg down was, that was, was nice. really nifty. Oh, yep. Very hard to prepare for, that's for Second round underway here. Now in the white pants, Via in the black pants. Now they got the cobwebs knocked off, which you see some action. A little bit more action in the second round. Oh, oh nice. Almost a double kick again, Kevin. Yeah, once there's a close guard, the striking is over. <laughs> Only knee on belly is allowed, but no grabbing. Ooh, I love the I love the the distance management from both guys. Yeah. Oh, nice, left, nice right, right hand from Lovar. First minute of this second round elapsed uh, in fairly short order there. Oh, lovely axe kick to close the distance, but he eats a inadvertent uh, groin shot along the way. South on the border. <laughs> Via's saying he feels that Ooh. hit him in the butt, but uh, I'm sure we may get a replay to uh, let us decide for ourselves. Here we go. Nice little axe kick. Good old bookie kick right there. Yeah. You know, it can kick the cup, and then the yeah. cup can get yeah. in there. That's why I wear those steel cups. I think it's a little bit better. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> nice, good. Those are fangs, those are fangs. Strong man, strong man. Do like the variation in the kicks we're seeing, though? Oh. Always nice to see an axe kick here or there. I'm loving it. I'm loving the variety of kicks. The speed, the accuracy in both of these guys with it when it comes to their kicking good. ability. But I think when it comes to their hands, they're gonna they're gonna have to win it with the hands. Yep. Whoever is gonna throw not one technique but combinations. You're seeing a lot of one technique and then move. That's it. We're also seeing such little work with the hands that it would change the, the tempo and throw someone off to just yes. suddenly switch it. Basic stuff, setting up, set your kicks up with punches. Footwork, footwork. And more volume in kicking, I would love yeah. to see. I would like to see the other way around. Use the hands to set up the kick. Exactly. 
just the other way around. First he kicks it, then a hand. <laughs> He's just <counted. laughs> That's right. Oh, that was a good timing from here on that body shot as Lavoie closed the distance, landed fairly cleanly. Yeah, he starts to find his range. Touch that leg, touch that leg. Ooh. There you go. And we talk yeah. about counter punches, counter kicking. Yeah, moving out of the way, coming very well around house, that's weird. <laughs> that's a whole lot more difficult. To yeah. do. You're close to the wall, you're close to the wall, you're close to the wall. That's interesting to hear. Oh, nice. The corner shout that, that you're run, close to there. the wall. They Go want first. him to circle out. Go first, Damien. If you see Louval, that little half a step in, and then he, he backs out. He's trying to get that reaction from Villa. There you go. He's in and out, in and out. Oh, it's a good left hand on the way in. Tries to transition to a takedown, but again, commits to the legs, which you can't do with both hands here. So the referee swiftly breaks them up. I feel a spin kick coming. I just feel it. Nice. Lavoie's got a really good one. 10 seconds, let's go. Yeah. Oh, the second man. I felt it. Oh, oh, I want to see that replay. That was cool. Yeah, I couldn't quite see who landed what. what hit it was what, the second noise. Yeah. <laughs> Not the, fir the first one was the distractions. The wow. second one that landed. Oh. So let's take okay. a look at some of the replays here. <laughs> well, that was trying to get a time. There's the switch kick. Didn't quite land. This is Lavoie with the axe kick. And oh, yeah. Yeah, that, was... that looked like it was across the rear. Right, right. Again. I like that a lot. Little shuffle side kick. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Is this the last one? Let's take a look. Yeah. Rolling Watch Thunder it. just hey. over the top. Oh, yeah. It was the second kick. But it was the back push. What is that, a car wheel kick? Uh, yeah, that, I guess. It's not a Rolling Thunder, is it? It's not a Rolling Thunder. It's man. a car wheel kick. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just take it. <laughs> I had a friend of mine. He was an older guy. He was my age when I was training with him, and I was like 35. Dude, it was so scary the way really? he threw that thing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you got a heel coming towards you. He's a cute machine guy. Nice. Uh, powerful. Third and final round underway here. Last three minutes for Lebois in the white pants and Damien Villa in the black. There you go. Good. Villa had said, you know, he, he wanted to stay on the outside. He wanted to react to Lebois and stay out oh, of that short inside nice. range. But that's really nice, nice variation from the Canadian. Yep. Leaping left hand there. That's beautiful. And the counter kick that uh, Villa had just before that was really nice as well. He's got a fast left kick. All right. Let's get a land. Oh, well, that's the, the kind of spinning hook kick that Lavoie is known for. He counts the counters with that left, eh? Yes. Yeah. Nice. yeah, he kind of takes a half a step back, and he's so quick with that counter roundhouse. Andy Hook, Kakato <laughs> Giri. <laughs> nice. Yeah, fainting with the hands as well. Lavoie still pressing forward. There you go, there you go. Starting to get out work now, perhaps. Yeah. You got a minute 45. Nice. That's nice. You walked on nice. that kick. I love the way Laval closes that gap, gets on the inside. He knows he's, that's where he does his best. He's got to get there. It's tricky, though, because when you got an opponent who moves so well backwards and throws that, that left kick, it's hard to get on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been trying to get there by throwing that lead leg out and hopping behind it. Switching a little bit now to use the hands to get his way in. I think it's paying a few more dividends for him. Earns the takedown there. Five seconds of ground and pound. <laughs> Via tries to work his way up. we got a minute left. Now Via the one pressing forward now. Forcing Lavoie to circle out. I feel like Lavoie's got a little cut over his left eye. Oh, yeah, we see the blood trickling down the left side of the face now. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see the blood on the body of Via as well from 
The last clear. Oh, that was oh. nice again. Oh, wow. Now it was about to ask you to win a side kick afterwards. Before he did it the other way around. Well, Lavoie trying to get the hands going on the inside. Ten seconds left in this one. See this one out. They tried a tornado kick at the end, but too little, too late. Lavoie thinks he's done enough. So he did the side kick in the roundhouse kick in the first round. And yes. I was thinking, I go, it will be cooler if he does first the roundhouse kick because if they move backwards and come back and then the side kick. And that's right. what he did in exactly. the third round. Because he leans back, yeah. the body open, yeah. boom, stabs him with the side kick. So here's some of the replays from that third round. Some dynamism with the kicks. Nice little wheel kick there. That was that double kick from Vila. Tried it again, but he got cut off by the cross from Lelwa. Now, yeah. do we know what caused the cut over the left eye? I didn't get a clean shot of it. This was the takedown from Lavoie. Trying to pop up for some ground and pound here. Oh, well, it looks like go. we're going to go to oh. a fourth round. Uh, okay. We don't have this happen all that often, but there's a clause in the karate combat rules that if the judges deem it too close to decide and they're going to end up potentially with a draw, they can trigger a fourth and sudden death round. Now this is where we see who wants it more. Exactly. When they think it's going to be over, Yeah, who wants this fight more? I this love is, this. This is dig deep territory, right? Yes. You dump your adrenaline, and now you've got to refocus. We've had this happen a couple of times previously, and it always makes it exciting. Oh, that was a nice counter. Moving backwards in the air, counter with Rwanda has kicked the body. I like that. Another nice attack. Good block by Lavoie. There's a good blitz. Didn't land anything, though, but he's got to stay there. He's got to stay there and throw. You cannot allow him to back up. Oh. Whoever wants it needs to go. Oh, wow. Now he trickles a little bit of blood next to his nose. Do I see that or is that? Uh, it looks Shadow. a little red. It looks a little yeah. red. Use your legs. There you go. There you go. He's just gonna a lot of high level competition in the history books for Damien Villa. Represented Mexico since uh, 2008 before he settled in the United States. He's actually been doing a lot of training with Luke Rockhold, teaching him Taekwondo, and uh, learning some takedown defense from him as well. Who wants it the most? They need to turn it up. Yeah, you're gonna start pulling the trigger here. A minute and a half left in this bout. That's it, Lavar should count, uh, faint, moving forward, let him throw the kick, and then attack. And Vila should blitz in there. Yes. Oh, nice, nice, nice right hand. Oh, straight in that cross. Straight. You see Lavoie bouncing again, trying to find the range. That blood still streaming down the face. Neither one has quite managed to solve the puzzle of the other fighter just yet. Nope. Naval's got to do something. He's letting he's letting Villa take it. That's nice. Good overhand left. I need him going. Yes. Why would you stop him back up? Exactly. Don't let him reset. Just blast. Yeah, you've done the hard work to get again. Ooh, that's a good shot. Yep. Twenty seconds. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta go here. Again, good shot from Lavoie to the body, not doing a huge amount of damage, but scored nonetheless. It's very hard to score this one too. Oh, this is good work from the Canadian in the dying oh. seconds here. Tricky, tricky, tricky indeed.
take a look at the replays from that sudden death round as the judges' scorecards are being collected. Give us your thoughts, Bart. It was, I think, Lavoie connected more with punches at yes. the very end. Vila was kicking a lot, but a lot missed as well. Uh, that one connected, but then Robin Lavoie just walked into it. It's it's a very hard to fight to score. Right, this is it's so tricky because you know he is throwing the techniques, he's not landing the techniques, but you have Laval over here closing the gap, throwing a, a left hand or a right hand. He was connecting, but um, you know a few Villa's kicks landed as well. So like you said, it's, it's super hard. Yep. What are they counting more here? I guess the kicks, right? That's right. Let's go ahead and get the official decision. Drew, you're up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Before we announce it, a big round of applause for both of these gladiators. Our winner from Canada, Robbie Lavoie! So the Lavoie. red corner, Robbie Lavoie! Robbie Lavoir is going to take this. He moves his record here at Karate Combat to 2 and 0. Oh. That original win over Moulet Udud and now over Damien Villa. Villa is going to drop his record by one more here. And Robbie Lavoir is going to head up pit side. It felt right, but I don't want to. To get a word with Leila Machado, Gary. Robbie, you triggered that fourth round. How did you feel in that moment when you realized you still had another round to, to go? I, I train hard. I got a great coach, straight shake conditioning. Got a great team, my beautiful fiance who's standing right there, expecting baby number two in mid July, so if she can carry around and birth the baby. The least I can do is train my ass off, so it feels great. Fair analogy, congratulations. And also, right at the end there, as they said split decision, I saw your face drop. I knew it was close. Yeah. I knew you were close. You could have got. Oh, yeah. I'm not worried, man. I, I know I hit him with some good left hands in that extra round. Um, Damien was a great opponent. He brought out the best of me. He's very humble, a talented individual. And um, all the hats off to him, man. He brought out the best of me, brought out the warrior in me. And uh, thank you for all the fans for showing up. Thank you, my. Amazing fiance, my, my best friends here, my coaches. Thank you to everybody back home at Diverse Martial Arts. GB Auto, I couldn't do it without any, all of you. Um, my son at home is a year and a half. Dax thing, you should be sleeping, but daddy loves you. And one more question. Those kicks, they were really fantastic. We've seen you sort of upgrade with your kicks there. Was that part of your training? I, I just train every day to become a best, better martial artist. Try to improve day in and day out as a human being and as a martial artist. So I'm glad I was able to show it tonight in the pit. You did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, boys, both of you, for that wonderful, wonderful contest. Yes, this is called Karate Combat. Yes, we celebrate the art of karate, and the rule set is within the art of karate. But we invite you to bring whatever martial arts you've trained your whole lifetime. Via brought the beautiful art of Taekwondo and fought with that front leg, using it almost as a fencing tool. Why are Taekwondo artists so good with high kicks? Because martial arts are usually developed by an oppressed people, and the Koreans were oppressed by soldiers on horseback. So the high kicks and the jumping kicks. Robbie was equal to him in the kicking game and a little sharper with his karateka uh, hand striking. That was the difference. But both of you two, mwah, thank you for a wonderful contest. This there, uh, second bout in the cards, guys. Uh, closing thoughts on that one. Always nice to see a battle of kicks, a lot of variety. Got to show, say some good stuff. Um, Robbie Lavoie coming out ahead. Yeah. Okay. I thought he won. I think they, 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 there could have been more variety between hands and kicks. Yes. You know, setting it up and what we were talking about the whole time. Once you connect, why would you stop? Keep on going. That's right. Laval, he should have. There's a there's a few spots there. He's using that side kick to close the gap. But once you got there, because him being the shorter fighter. The, the, the shorter reach, you got to stay inside of that, of his range and stay there, not allow him to back up. Yep. He did come out with the win, but I would like to say, I would like to see more of the, the hands setting up the kicks instead of the kicks 
setting up the hand. Exactly. So room for improvement under the rules, I think, fair to say. So that is the second bout uh, in, the, uh, in the books now. We've got uh, a few more coming your way. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, at our very exciting public offering that's coming up on May the 10th. Okay, there is me here. Oh, are you serious, dude? There. All right, everybody, can have your attention. Listen up. Karate Combat is the new striking league taking over combat sports. Real fights, real stories, real knockouts. And boy, Karate Combat is giving the whole league to its fans. Karate Combat is issuing a token that will govern the league. Yes, I know, of course, you've seen these tokens, but trust me, this is completely different. Because Karate Combat will have no owners, no hidden strings, nothing. Just the Karate Token. Oh, come on, man, not you again. Go here. Rose! Rose! Ooh, pick that head up. Stay down. People. But wait, there's more. Check out our new app. Pick a fighter, and if that fighter wins, you win more tokens. Meaning, more of the league goes to you. Well, what do you all think? All right. Okay, my work is done here. Go to karate.com slash airdrop and sign up now. Very exciting coming May 10th. Something completely new for everybody at home. Uh, lots more info coming up about that public offering later on uh, in the show. Of course, we're going to move swiftly on to our next bout, Kenji Grion and George Perez. Um, really, really exciting bout. Bass, Kenji Grion is coming off a win over Nikos Gadakos in his debut last time out. Yes, but he said he was way too emotional. So this time he said he worked very hard on controlling his emotions. He also worked hard on his boxing. So the game plan is going to be controlling the distance, throw many low kicks, and then switch, not to a head kick, but to a body kick. And you don't see that a lot. A, a lot. I love the body kick. That's why I said love. Agree. <laughs> I love it. And of course, George Perez, uh, his... Uh, his opponent here tonight, um, this guy's just an all-round athlete. You know, this yeah. isn't the first sport that he, he's good at. Yeah, he said he has been offered a pro baseball career, but chose karate, baby, training hard, working on his striking, and also on countering the low kicks from his opponent. Yeah, and of course, he's coming off that win over James Vick, who we're going to see later on. That's a big scout for him. Huge, huge, especially somebody tall and, of course, versatile as James Vick. Countering the low kicks, that's going to be fun because the other game plan was he wants to kick with low kicks, start yes. with low kicks. So if he's going to get rocked before he can land that middle <laughs> kick, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, really fun fight this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the head-to-head -head for Kenji Grion and George Perez. Kenji Grion coming in as a former world champion in the WKF world. Jorge Perez coming in after winning over James Vick. They are really good prospects in the 75 division. This is going to be a clash where the outcome can be a really big step for the title contendership. Ladies and gentlemen, our third bout of the evening is a welterweight contest. Fighting out of the blue corner from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Welcome, Jorge El Pa Perez. So this is Jorge El Pa Perez. Likes to be called George, actually, but 3-2-0 uh, is his record on Karate Combat, of course, coming off that win over James Vick at KC 36. Very proud of himself on that occasion. A lot of pit experience coming in tonight. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner from France. Welcome, Kenji Grion. Kenji Grion happy with his appearance last time out as well. Said he was very well trained, but he thinks he can still do better this time. Been working on his emotions, making sure he doesn't overcommit too fast and just be a little bit more controlled. Tell the tape for this one, George Perez, 35 years old. You see that three and two record coming in at five foot seven. Slightly taller of the two fighters with a bit of a reach advantage at five foot ten. Kenji Grion from France, one and oh is that record. Expect uh, 
He's going to look to attack the legs hard. Your referee for this contest is going to be Mr. Mark Goddard. All right, fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Well, don't just join the club, own it. Kampaipandas.com. Kampai! <laughs> now, this is going to be an interesting one. Both these guys, as we said, coming off. Good wins last time out. Ooh, good inside, low kick. Well, this is something we talked about from the Frenchman, is just how vicious his kicks could be. He stopped Nikos Gadakos from Greece with oh, those low wow. kicks. Look at that. that he does not care. Oh, shit. another shit. time. time. He's, he's going to warn him for the target yeah, area. He's got to keep them yep. below the knee. That one's sneaking a little bit up, but vicious right off mm, the bat. It's really great kicking. It's got some it's power on it. Very dangerous kick, though. Shit, I'm shit. Now going up top, with George Perez having to back up quickly here, looking to get his hands to work. Krillin doing very well, uh, controlling the inside of the pit. You know, going from the 135ers to one, they seem big for 165. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, lovely timing on that right low kick. He's tearing up that lead leg early, showing the feints now. Nice, I like it. And he's controlling himself. Oh, yeah. Grilling too, those French fighters are super tough, man. I mean, going shin to shin with somebody doesn't feel good if you're not conditioned. Oh, oh. Yeah. You always talk about being very careful with the angle you attack that, uh, that inside kick. Yeah, and especially if they oh, don't open the hip and the, uh, the hips and they kick with the flat part oh, of the shin. Yeah. So uh, help the viewers out at home here. He's fainting with that right leg, motioning that low kick. What's What can he throw, uh, you know, off the feint if he's not going to throw the right? Hmm. Oh my goodness, if he's not going to throw the right foot, the right hand? No, he's fainting with the right leg constantly, ah. but if he's not going to actually throw it, what's, what's he going to follow up with? Well, that's the thing. If you're not going to throw it, if you're fainting with it, you got to set it up with the hand. you got to set it with the right hand. You're using your lead leg to faint. you got to close the gap and throw the hands. Now, you can go low and come back up high for the body kick. Ooh, good right hand there from, from Perez. Oh. Grillon is doing what he said he was doing, right? Yeah. He's doing the low kick, low kick, low kick. So any moment when he gets, George Perez gets uh, used to it, he's going to switch it to a middle kick, he said. Well, Grillon took that right hand like a champ, though. Yeah, <laughs> he's a tough guy. Yeah, Perez said he knew he was going to have to watch the low kicks, and he, he'd been coming up with a striking strategy specifically the to deal kick. with it. Oh, There's the low kick again. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Exactly. Sticking to the game plan. And this is this nice ground of power. Very yeah. nice. He st stepped, stayed away, so he had a lot of reach. And picking his shots, not just going, not just flailing yeah. out there. He's picking That's his right. shots. Accuracy on the ground of pound, working the head and the body. Last 20 seconds here. Ooh, oh, nice oh, off oh. hook there Woo. by Perez. Looks like uh, Grillon got rocked there for a little bit with the left hand. Yeah. Even so, though, closing out this first round, probably pretty clear that Kenji Grion's taking that one home. 100%. Oh, yeah. Those, those low kicks, I think, did, did all the work, man. It helped him set up his strikes. But you can't take too many of those low kicks like that. No, it, and it's dangerous. It's just a simple dangerous to throw. TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Go, watch. And visit, wow. visit us at karate.com for the latest news on karate like combat Perez, events and fighters. He knew these low kicks were going to come. And then he was actually faced with it, and he still got popped anyway. Is that going to play into his mind a little bit? I think so. Oh, yeah. You know? And he already switched it to a middle kick. Then he went straight back to the low kicks To the low kicks, kicks again. again. Yeah. So now he should pick the head, you know, make it a Yoda That's kick. what I'm saying. So yeah. now when you list that leg, he has no idea where that kick's going to go. Yep. Is it going to go leg? Is it going to go body? Is it going to go head? I, like you said, I do agree. I think you should take it up high. Yeah. That's the replays of that first round. That stern look from Mark Goddard as a couple of the shots coming right in on the break. Second round underway here. Be looking for that low kick from Grillin. Yep. Nice pull from backwards. Went straight back door, shoot to the sides. There's the Ooh. kick again. That's the setup. 
Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Good head movement. Oh, look at that. Nice takedown. Oh, cough up a lung. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flat on your back. <laughs> Zuki. Surrender. Nope. That oh. was nice. Duck in a hook. Yeah. Definitely out of position, falling over. Doesn't look good in the judge's eyes there. Yeah, with two minutes left. Oh, oh nice, nice counter. Up, yeah. Got you. Right now, Grillin's controlling the center of the pit fairly well. There, as you can tell. I love it. He's doing the fainting that you've been talking about all the time. Nice job. Body lock put it down. He's creating some distance, though. Yeah, Grillin's done a good job here. In the first Getting round, on top he, one more time. He did some great, great ground and pound. Short shots on the inside. Yeah. Mark Goddard's going to separate them one more time. Got about a minute left. Okay. Man, nice hey. one. Right hook. Everything that Grillon said his game plan was, he's actually doing. So this is good. He's controlling his emotions. He's in and out. He's throwing the low kicks, then a the middle kick. We're waiting here, Stephen and I, for the hiking now. Oh, <laughs> nice cross. Got oh. the inside low kick right away. Oh, lovely I love slip it. to move out of the way. Yep. George Perez is uh, going to have to find something here. I feel like Grillin has kind of put him in a box. He's going low, going to the leg, going to the body. Right. He's, and he's imposing his game oh. so thoroughly. Yes. And I feel like Perez is, has no idea what to do now. Not after that first round, I think it's a good time. Uh, Somebody is moving a microphone all the time. It's super annoying. This is where Grillin has got to counter him. When he swings and misses, he's going to have to let that right hand go because Perez is swinging and missing, and, but Grillin's not countering that. Good, but those leg kicks are there all day. That's, That's round number two in the books. I think Grillin has taken it away now. I think he, he's striding ahead. He's getting really in control. He's, he's doing a great job. Yeah, it's, been, it's been from the opening 10 seconds, really. He's just slowly imposed more and more and more. Take a look at some of the replays here. Effectively. George Perez, what's he got to do now to find his way back in? We're fairly confident he's two rounds down. He's got three minutes left to turn it around. What does he do? He's going to have to close the gap and let his hands go. He's got very, very heavy hands. He's just got to let it go. He's got to come, yeah. He's got to go forward because... Answer back with your own leg kick. Yep. You know? Yep. Well, let's see what the demeanor looks like as they start this third and final round. Grilling. Look at that face grilling. Look at the focus in his face. You can see it in his eyes. Yeah, you see that uh, slight reach advantage for Grillon as well. It's really starting to Whoa. be obvious as he stands up tall and the Frenchman barreling forward with vicious stop, intent. Stop. Well, sorry, Perez. Perez. <laughs> Just, yeah, but, yeah. He, he is, but that's what he needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You called it. That was great. A nice high kick. That was a high kick. You should have set it up with the low kick, though, because yes. it's too early in the round. Well, we get a great shot here, pit side of the the eye contact between these two. A lot of feints coming in from Grion. I feel like Perez yes. is not. Yes, oh, he's Ooh. grabbing the neck. Cannot do that with the knees. You got to throw without grabbing the opponent. Yeah, you can grab the opponent and pull them onto the knee, but you have to have ceased contact as the strike lands. Ah. So it's an interesting nuance the referees have got to be aware of here. The fighters have been briefed in great detail about the, you know, the intricacies of that rule application. Ooh, Ooh that's Didn't nice. Keep going. 
Yeah. Oh, another head it. kick. I love it. The first two rounds, first two rounds, he was setting that up. He was throwing, throwing the low kick, throwing Oof. the body kick, and now letting it fly up high. But like you said, throw the leg kick to the first, then set it up That's up high. That's it. And then keep Ooh, lovely shot on the break. Yeah. Grillen is really finding his range. Oh, got to be careful there, though. Again, landed low, tried to duck out of it. Anxious moments for George Perez here. Grillon with the center of the pit. Just the kick comes down again. He's targeted ground and pound here. Lovely posture as well. Wide base getting up high. And Perez is looking yes. a little bit beaten here. Yes, yeah. he's looking defeated, getting up slowly. He's breathing and he got hit to the bread basket. <laughs> so that will work against you. Final 30 seconds, just a lot slower coming forward there. Easily avoided by Grillon. That was a nice high kick. That was close. Grillen has definitely imposed his will on Perez this fight. Oh, oh. nice right hand. Stop, stop, stop. Again, putting him back against the wall. Closing seconds here. I'm fairly confident nice. we know which way this one is going. <laughs> Yep, did everything that he said he was going to do. I Very strategic fight from Grillen. Awesome, stuck to the game plan, put Perez in a box, and he had no idea what to do. Yeah, and handle. he really did impose very, very early. Yeah. He did everything. It was beautiful. You know, all the setups, the, the emotions control, that was the best. You know, because we had a fighter the first time when he fought, he didn't run out of the gas, but he was really, uh, really powerful and emotional, and this time he was in complete control. Yeah, it was something he said he really wanted to work on, actually. So I feel like he he really did make use of his training camp coming into this one. He, he, he did exactly what he said he'd been working on. Yep. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. <laughs> it's funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> Look that, at this. Boom, that was that high kick. Ooh. That was beautiful. Now, final replays here. This was that last sort of half flurry from Perez where he got the, the kick caught. And, Again, look at the posture on this ground and pound. It's a wide base, standing up high. It's excellent work from Grion here. A little cheeky up kick, but uh, never really in danger. Let's go ahead and get the decision from our third fight of the evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision out of the red corner from France, Kenji Grion. So unanimous decision win for Kenji Grion. Uh, no surprises there though, Bass Wonderboy. Final thoughts wrapping up that bout. Well, like you said, well, like you said, Grillen imposed his will. He went out there, he crushed it, he stuck to his game plan, and sometimes it's that easy. You stick to your game plan, and it's that easy. Yeah, I gotta say, Bass, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does next, because we we saw a genuine focused evolution from fight one to fight two, and some of the, the best low leg kicks that we've seen in karate combat. I think he did phenomenal. I think from all the fights we had, he was the best fighter tonight till oh, this yeah. moment. He, I mean, he picked everything. He used his reach, which was really nice. You know, he's got long arms, but to stay away from your opponent, because people get emotional and they close the gap too fast, and then they jam each other, they can't really extend their arms. He didn't do that. I think that was what I was most impressed with, is how calm he was, yep. and how strategic he was, and sticking to his game plan. And it was so Almost like he saw everything coming. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing how he takes uh, the, the the mental boost he's going to get from that and the momentum into whoever Karate Combat can throw at him next. Uh, of course, main event tonight, we've mentioned it a couple of times, Igor de Castaneda is taking on Ross Levine for that middleweight championship. Here is Layla with a quick preview.
undisputed champion Ross Levine will be taking on Igor de Castaneda, a man who's been carrying frustration for almost a year now. You see, this is a rematch, a rematch of a battle that Ross won by TKO, a result that Igor disputed in that moment and has continued to dispute right up until now. Today, they can put that all to bed. <laughs> Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. Both these guys fought each other before. Oh, oh, the face, the head. Ross Levine finished Igor de Castaneda with a beautiful kick. Igor Castaneda unhappy with the decision. I hit him with a spinning axe kick and my heel hurts. He was hurt. Para mí, yo seguido. He should be very happy that he's healthy. Perhaps he could have been given a bit more time. Claro que quiero un rematch. Years passed since then. These guys are new fighters. We have a new middleweight champion, Ross Levine. I'm here to fight everybody. I'm going to wipe the entire division clean. This night, the best fighter in the division, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian Bull. Ross Levine, you might be looking at a rematch, my friend. The fans, us, we all wanted to see this fight, and that's why this was the fight for us to make. I'm here, I'm ready, and we're going to get after it again. Ross, I'm coming. Yeah, so I've only got like go ahead. So and that is an exciting you. main event coming <laughs> up later. Uh, next up, we've got a really interesting bout and a little bit of bad blood brewing from the way in. Shahzib Rind and Gabo Diaz are up next. Uh, Bass, I'll start with you. Uh, Shahzib Rind, he's our first Pakistani fighter uh, to join the roster here. And uh, actually, originally comes from a bit of a wushu background. Uh, which is really great because they also have cake takedowns. It's a little bit of the same rules as that we have here at Karate Combat. He says he feels great. His cake run is going to be striking plus wrestling. Yes, I love to see that. He loves the front kick to the face. I love it. He will throw body shots and he uses the wall and he believes that the knockout will come tonight yeah uh, wonder boy his opponent tonight garbo diaz uh guy's a little bit of a wild man and yes. uh, he's very very fast he is very quick but he knows his opponent is a kickboxer but he says you know what no problem he's going to counter his attacks use back uh his back fist and the back kicks and also has a new kick that he's not going to reveal to us until he steps out there into the pit that he's going to use to the face. <laughs> yeah, I promise you, we do try and find out when they say that what it's going to be. Most of the time, they don't want to tell us. <laughs> no, and then, by the way, if Gabo is going to win, he said he's going to do the rooting job. Ooh, he's going to do the split, so let's see what happens. OK, lightweight action coming up now. Here's the head-to-head, -head, Shazahib Rind and Gabo Diaz. Shazahib Rind, Gabo Diaz. Shazahib is coming from Pakistan a new member of the Gold Shed team. He just recently moved to the US to train full-time and to fight in karate combat. He's gonna face Gabo Diaz, who fought at KC37, our last show in December, and won this fight. Very, very interesting fight. I can't wait to see. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth bout tonight is a lightweight contest. Our first competitor fighting out of the blue corner, representing Venezuela, Gabo Lee Diaz. So his nickname, Gabo Lee Diaz, uh, the easiest way to explain that is he's walked around all week wearing Bruce Lee's Game of Death yellow and black tracksuit. So, <laughs> That's how he sees himself as he comes out for this one. 1-0 one on Karate Combat, beating Sami Enkali due to a dislocated shoulder, actually, last time out. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing Pakistan. Welcome, Shazen! A lot of support in the house. For Shazahib Arin. A lot of people watching back in Pakistan as well told me there's a bit of a big screen viewing party going on. And it's, you know, he, he doesn't feel a lot of pressure, but, you know, he's the first guy from his country in a sport that's emerging a bit over there. So he's really trying to be a, trying to be a bit of a, a trailblazer as we look 
at the bio for Garbo Diaz, who is standing stone-faced in the corner, 25 years old. He's going to be the shorter of the two fighters. Take a look at those uh, leg and arm reach numbers as you see the taller fighter, Shazahi Barin, making his debut here, so he doesn't have the experience in the pit of his opponent, but uh, I don't think that's going to bother him. Very confident young man every time we've spoken to him. It is that time, time to enter the pit. Karate Combat 38 is powered by Hedera. Wayne Spinola, your referee for this one as we get underway. White pants for Garbo Diaz, black pants for Rin. Three minutes on the clock. Now, Rin with a much more traditional boxing type of guard and movement coming forward here. Very oh, yeah. smart. Yeah, switching to southpaw. You know, Stomping front ooh. kick, and Diaz winging that left hand. Nice right hand. Very calm, very calm fighter. Oh. Ooh, ooh, accurate. I like accurate. the kick sequence there. Front kick to the face. We were talking about it. Look at that. It, yeah, we talked about how fast. Uh, Diaz is. He said spinning, uh, spinning back fist was definitely going to be a weapon for him. There we go. We're seeing it early. Diaz has actually been living in Orlando since last year, training at Fusion XL Performance. Oh, oh. nice head kick. What? Very good control. Distance is good. Oh, the tra <laughs> trading uh, takedown attempts there, both stepping across for... Fight. Well, either the Harai or the Uchi, depending on where their legs were going to land. Rindy was trying to go for the throw. Ooh, and Diaz was like, oh, let me try it. <laughs> I like the timing on that. Oh. Spinning back kick, and Rindy's not letting oh, oh, oh. it go. Diaz bounding that. up and away. That might be the highest we've seen anyone hit the karate combat wall. I thought he was launching himself out. Like Matt Max with the motorcycles rolling around. Oh, eight's an uppercut there. Oh, oh again, Rind is vicious with this ground and pound. Wow, oh, pinpoint accuracy. Woo. Wonder if Diaz is tough. He took them shots. He's back up. Wonder if that's going to make Diaz think. Rind staying very composed. Beautiful. I like the fades, the leveling, everything he's doing. Yeah, looking very fluid. Mm -hmm. Nice Ooh, check lovely. there. Yeah, high block. Yes. Well, Ridden starting to oh. march him down a little bit. That was close. That was good timing, too. It went yep. right across his head. If that would have landed, that would have been devastating. Whoa, nice counter there. Who calls? Oh. And the again. And again, trying that spinning back fist, and Diaz having to hang on for dear life here. Look at me, look at me. Big Fight. section of fans in the crowd for end. Ooh, nice counter with the leg kick. So beautiful, let it miss and then counter. Yeah, he's very much in control. Lint. Great first round, exciting. Mm. Yeah, really, really interesting first round. We knew this could be a sleeper for fight of the night and absolutely playing out as such. Oh, yeah. Very calm fighter, man, very calm fighter. He really looks great, but, but you know, Diaz came with the hook cross he threw. He started feeling, uh, hitting his target as well. Yes. So. Well, let's take a look at some of the replays here and the handiwork from these two young men. Let's see if we see the runaway, that was nice. This, here we go. <laughs> you know, let's, you know, talk about the experience of, of Rind, because he's 20, what, 24 years old? Yes. And he has a kickboxing record of 75 and four. Yeah. What? Between kickboxing and wushu. Yeah, well, you can tell. Can't verify it, but he said he thinks it's about a 60% <laughs> knockout rate. He, yeah, he doesn't know. He's, it's whatever. 75. Wow. 75 and, and four. Can, 75 yeah. and four. You can definitely see the, the experience from Rind. Yeah, looking very... Uh, Ready? Very calm. He's Fight. actually done a, a couple of months training in prep for this one at the Goat Shed Gym here in Miami. So 
Definitely getting some local support as well. The constant level change in that Rin's doing as well. It throws so your opponent. Yeah. And look, he's switching uh, look at southpaw that. to orthodox as well. Backing Diaz up. Oh, oh. goes for the Uchimata off the wizard. Just not Stop quite it, hopping please. through it enough. Good, good, hits from, good hits from Diaz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the times being the shorter fighter and a little bit lower to the ground helped him out there. Oh, and that's nice work from the, uh, the yeah, Venezuelan. Diaz led in a nice lipper kick there in the middle. I'll let the shove off. Yeah, the well, the yeah. You know, the, you guys were standing right next to them at the weigh-ins. Um, they didn't really like each other. No, <laughs> at all. <laughs> Those always make for excellent fights, though. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bad is. blood. I'm sure you've never had any in a fight, Steven. You're uh, far too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I eat them up with niceness. Well, I saw the, the, the karate guy who came to film you and interview you. Uh, that, that clip you sent last week on Instagram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, that's a very uh, movie-like tie of the belt there. <laughs> <laughs> Staring him down. Oh. eats a shot on the way in, though. Can't Just count Diaz out. You really can't. Ren is definitely beating in and landing that right hand. Very flush. One minute, Shante. Diaz, Diaz might be hurt right now. Yeah, I think Diaz is used to, to wanting to be the aggressor and, and be the one who's a little bit wilder and, and kind of, you know, pushing it. But uh, he's on the back foot very soundly here. About 40 seconds left in this round. Oof. Nice. Diaz is definitely slowing down a lot. Yeah, you see him breathing round. heavy also. Yes. And Rich starts going for the body even more now. You realize that as well. Both of you yeah, stop. Yeah, we did wonder how Hold conditioning would play into this one. I mean, Rin certainly coming in in phenomenal shape. Oh, oh that's nice. a good left hand. Very targeted, very oh. precise. Diaz oh. covering here. And you've got to remember, he's not considered grounded against the wall. It wasn't until right at the end there you would even start the five-second <laughs> clock. And the, the momentum is firmly in the corner of the Pakistani fighter. And Stephen, I'm going to blow your mind a little bit more here. Shazahin Rin said... 90% of his training before he came to Miami was from watching YouTube videos. <laughs> Stop it. No, he'd see something Stop he it. wanted to do and uh, he'd just try it. I <laughs> never thought, because we have guys come to the gym and say, yeah, I've got years of training and I learned off of YouTube or Kung Fu movies. Yeah. And it's laughable. Yeah. But when you see this guy, it works. You watch a YouTube channel, you know, or you yep. know, other fighters' breakdowns, he's using it very well. He looks sharp. This was the replay at the end here, and Diaz getting really pushed back Ooh. against the pit wall, and he's not a down fighter here, so these shots all completely legal. Um, what can Gabo Diaz do, guys? He's very much on the back foot. He's got to find some spark to, to bring this one back for him. If I was him, I would definitely keep him at the end of my kicks, because that right hand of Rind is definitely yep. landing. So right. using the side kick, using that spin back kick, there's the side kick right There's there, the right kick. off the bat. And he needs to fight dirty now. He's got to go in there, yes. fight close distance, body hit body shots, maybe uppercuts. On the distance, he's going to be picked apart. Yeah, it's going to take something very decisive from Diaz. Realistically, a, a knockout is or TKO is what's needed. Oh, and that that kick with, was with the instep, but it was right on the solar plexus. Did you see that? And there was oh, a yeah. little movement in. Diaz's eyes, so... I don't know, you know you what that did. You talk about uh, Diaz having to get kind of gritty and, and in there, but that was a nice little forearm shove-off from <laughs> Rin to just try and break the space right on the nose of Diaz. Oh, yeah. That makes you think twice about closing the gap. <laughs> oh, oh, man, look man. at that. Now Rin is just having some fun, I think. Yeah. Grabbing the kick, yeah. throwing down again, trying to pound. 
using his reach. Yeah, look at that, really oh. nice, driving the hips in to lift the head out of the way, help clear the legs to the side. Let's Lovely go. posture. Hey, that, my time, my time, my time. Put that in. Oh, Put yeah. that in. Put that in. Diaz Don't pay having pay to the fight. a war of Let's words. Go. Let's go. Of Shazahim Rin, and they're just calling their fighter on. Something tells me they're not really going to put things to bed once no, uh, this Let's round go. is over. <laughs> Well, that shows where what? Diaz's head's at, right? He's not in the fight. He's listening to his, co his, his opponent's coach. And that, that tells me that he's not all there. You can't let your emotions go, man. Exactly. Because now he starts loading up his punches, telegraphing all over the place. He's got to watch out. And for Rin, more time. And knowing that his opponent's emotional, you got to stay focused to finish it, man. You can't get silly out there. You can't get... Can't get crazy, start dropping your hands because anything could happen. Oh, could you imagine one of those spinning back fists oh, yeah. suddenly land with a minute <laughs> left? Rin goes straight to the body. Bass yeah. Rutten special. One minute. <laughs> Cross to the body, it's most of the time set up for the left hook. Uh, a little bit too little, too late from Diaz there. Nice ground and bound again from Rin. And that's been a huge weapon for him wow. in this bout. Look at me, look at me. 35 Let's go. seconds Let's left here. He looks Let's so bring calm, bring he just, nice little inside check on the bicep. He just pause here, we've got a clinch, we'll break again. Very much a flow state, but he's a chopping kick up there. That was nice. That was nice. Listen, There's he's tired, right. but Diaz is in the fight, man. He's still going. Yeah, good knee up the middle from Diaz. He wasn't the one clinching, so that was a, a legal uh, shot from him. Front kick face. Maybe. Last couple Last of one. seconds. Wow. Hey! The acrobatics till the end from the Venezuelan. They're going to head back up to pit side. We're going to look at some replays. Something tells me we're not going to be in for a fourth round here. No. I think that one <laughs> is pretty decisive, guys. Yeah, that was really nice work. I think we have a really great fighter added on to our roster here. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really impressed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the one of the fighters we've had come along, make a debut, and just being like, yeah, they're there. They're at that level. Give them somebody, you know. Right. Really good. Look at that shot at the end from the corner. The, the vicious ground and pound from Red. Yeah. Right, oh I mean, it was, it was targeted, the posture yes. was good, wanting to stay safe, clear the legs. You know, this was the closing moment from Diaz and Rind wanting to get one last shot in here. Let's go! Wow. Well, let's throw it down, make this one official. All right, ladies. Oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for both of these fighters tonight. Our winner tonight by unanimous decision out of the red corner from Pakistan, Shazam Shazahin Rind gets his win here in his karate combat debut, along with a lot of fan support in the house. Getting a little tour of the pit here with the flag of his nation. Very interested to see what he says off the back of this. Very articulate young man. And he's going to head up pit side here and get a word with Layla. And clinical against an unpredictable and fairly wild opponent. Did you find him quite unpredictable in that? Yeah, it's my plan. I was, you know, just relax, chill in the ring, enjoy the ring. Now, you must tell me about your incredible fan base. They were so loud throughout, and we know Pakistan is backing you as well. How was it for you hearing them whilst you were in the pit? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy because all of Pakistani community is here for me 
and they are supporting me back in Pakistan. Everyone is supporting me. Everyone is like crazy. And I love my country. I love you, everyone, for coming here. Congratulations. And big shout out to my coach and Laura Avlet. They supported me a lot to get here. So I really respect them. And I'm here because of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Robin Black, what did you think of that bout, sir? Karate is a physical expression of skill and not, and not spread. It originated in Japan and then spreads globally. This young man showed the colors and textures that, that Pakistan has added to the karate game, particularly his rhythm. Really hard to decipher his rhythm. He was dancing to a different song, and that a rhythm, that a rhythmic movement was so hard for his opponent to deal with and he showed skills in all areas and expressed them beautifully. This is a lightweight that we're going to keep our eyes on in karate combat. Congratulations, sir. That was a wonderful fight. Thank you, Mr. Robin. Black, uh, Stephen, Bass, uh, look, lightweight division's got some big, big hitters in it, right? Yep. Louis yes. Rocha, Gus Grievers, fun stuff. Uh, what do you think about Shazahin Reed in this division? I think he's going to do great because he's got the length and he knows how to use his reach. <laughs> and that's everything. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the replays here. Talk us through it, guys. Oh, man, spin back kick. This is where Ren right here, oh, well, he's chasing him, but <laughs> <laughs> I think where he came out was the takedowns and that vicious ground to pound. He was very calm, and that's what made the difference. I think, you know, even though it was his debut, it showed that he belongs with Karate Combat. And it showed this sheer amount of experience he's had from, what, 79, oh. about 80 bouts <laughs> coming into this one. It was just, like I said, on the money, everything he said. He started with the front, he stood the head. I think that Diaz hurt him because he blocked a few of those. He, he, he pushed him to the side, so that was good for him to do. Diaz had his moments as well. You know, the back kick landed, that running away, I thought it was great. The hook cross <laughs> or a cross hook landed. There were a few things that he did really well. But Rint was just way too much, too much in control, using yes. his reach. Again, everything is reach, everything is range. And ask him, he, he, what about <laughs> He's the master at that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, always you nice to have a new fighter come in with a bang here at Karate Combat. We've got one more, which is great. Uh, how about we go and take a word for the first time tonight with our roaming pit side supporter, Alex Wembley. Hey. Thank you, Josh. I am standing by Logan Chipwood, content creator, also known for his chat face over here, and an anime star. You've been to many karate combat events at this point. You're a, you're a karate combat vet, but how is the energy in this event tonight? This event tonight, hey, karate combat, the, the crowd has it's always brought a great energy because everybody's all up close, close to the stage, and you can see everybody, so they always bring the energy every fight. I love how it's very intimate, of course, and we just saw a great fight, the crowd over here, the goat shed support, but man, we have even more action to come. The main card, I know you were doing some content creation with Ross Levine, right. but is there anyone else on that card that you're interested in seeing fight? I'm ready for the Bruno Souza fight, the Battle of the Brunos. Um, James Vick, I've been watching him since he fought in the UFC, legend, so um, I'm excited for every, pretty much every fight tonight. There's, there's no fight that can go wrong, so it's always going to bring the action. I'm always excited to see every fight. Yes, it's April Fools, but this card is no joke. Yeah, I stole that from Boss Rutten. I'll send it back to you guys. <laughs> So a lot more action coming up next. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a sneak peek at the launch of our Karate Token coming up May 10th. Hey everyone, Boss Rudin here. Coming this January, Karate Combat will launch the up-only gaming app. Now in the new app, you'll be able to collect free Karate Combat tokens and then vote on your favorite fighters with those tokens. Simple, right? Now, if your fighter wins, you earn more tokens and if they lose, not a problem at all. You lose no tokens and just try again at the next event. You can also support your favorite karate combat fighters by boosting their potential fight prize pools. So your favorite fighter can take home more rewards when they win. Now more tokens means more influence over future fighter prize prize pools and other league's decisions. You got it all. And for a limited time only, receive two times the standard karate bonus sign-up tokens after the initial launch when you sign up right now. So go to karate.com slash airdrop or scan the QR code on your screen right now to receive twice the standard token allocation. So don't miss out. Sign up right now.
There's no purchase required. So let's talk about the difference between point karate and karate combat, which is full contact karate. In the beginning here at uh, karate combat, you saw literally guys, they were fighting and they threw a punch, yeah, and they stopped. And then that guy just started coming with combination. They realize, oh, crap, I gotta make sure that I'm gonna make combinations. So these guys, you saw them grow and getting stronger and stronger. You have to understand, we have Olympic level athletes here who turned away to karate combat and now fight full contact. That's right. When karate started in the 1800s in Okinawa, it was more like karate combat uh, that we have today. Yeah. Uh, perhaps they modify the rules and they make it more like point fighting karate because of safety. Yeah. However, in karate combat, there is no beginners. Yeah. These are for the elite of the elite. So. You'll make sure that the fighter that we see, it doesn't get better than this. Yeah, and the origin from karate, the empty hand, right? That's what they said. It's when they took, the government took all the weapons away uh, from, from the people and they realized, oh, we, we need to find something to defend ourselves. And that's how karate was born. That's right. Uh, the idea is to make your body a weapon and knowledge is the weapon. Hey, I don't need a weapon because I am a weapon. Indeed, oh. you are, my friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, Always fun to have George St. Pierre join us here at Karate Combat. Uh, right, coming up next, we are moving on to our only ladies bout on tonight, Carl. Melinda Ooh, Fabian taking on Erica Santos. Uh, two different fighters here again, taking different paths to get here tonight. Uh, Melinda Fabian, you know, she had a great debut, very complete fighter after a lot of MMA experience, but it's been a substantial amount of time off for her. Yes, she did. But, you know, she came back better, stronger, faster, worked hard on the footwork, angles, never go straight backwards, distance, all very important parts of fighting, so super smart. And she is looking to deliver a knockout blow by body shot. Whoa, body yeah, shot, huh? Body shot. I love, I, ooh, I love the way she's thinking. <laughs> uh, I'd be excited to see that. Her opponent tonight, Wonderboy, is Erica Santos. Uh, she's got a lot to prove uh, after suffering one of the most significant women's knockouts, or, or knockouts in general, yes. that we've seen on Karate Combat against Amara Molina. Yeah, Santos here, she said she's trained with the Pitbull brothers, worked hard on her punches, her back kick, her distancing, and of course, timing and her jumping knees, which I would love to see. She wants that win because she wants a rematch with Omara Melinda. Yeah, I think this is a, a could be a really interesting clash of technical styles here. Let's go ahead and see the head-to-head, -head, Melinda Fabian and Erica Santos. Santos. Melinda Fabian, former UFC fighter, is coming back to the pit. She's gonna take on Erika Santos from Brazil. Since her last fight, she adjusted and she believes that she can beat Melinda. Whoever wins this fight will get to a position to be one of the top contenders for the first ever female World Championships in Karate Combat. Ladies and gentlemen, our fifth bout of the evening is a bantamweight contest and the only female fight of the night. Our first competitor out of the blue corner, representing Hungary, welcome Melinda Fabian. Well, that is not Melinda Fabian. It's actually Erica Santos from Brazil in the blue corner, 33 years old. She comes here with a record of 0-1. Of course, she had that KO loss to Myra Molina uh, back in 2021. Has been training full-time at the Pitbull Brothers gym uh, to try and really get into the kind of style needed for this full-contact pit fight environment. Very confident, though, coming into this one. Well, training with the people brothers and uh, Luis Rocha, uh, the champion we, that we have here. And her opponent, we'll give you fighting tonight out of the blue <laughs> corner from Brazil. Welcome the Pitbull, Erica Santos. In case you hadn't guessed, uh, this is actually Melinda Fabian from Hungary, the predator in the red corner. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of years away since we last saw her fight, she's had a, a, a few uh, niggling little injuries she had to take care of. She's been working on building her own business as well, but eager to get back 
getting back to Karate Combat has been her goal, and she's here to make it pay tonight. Tail the tape for this one, Erica Santos, 33 years old, standing at five foot four. As you see, hailing from Brazil, she's got the current champ, Luis Roca, in her corner here tonight. Melinda Fabian from Hungary, Kempo stylist. A little bit older at 35, but a very, very complete all-round fighter. Your referee for this bout is Mark Goddard. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. The pit. The pit. And just a reminder to Karate Combat fans, you can download the free Karate Combat app on May 10th. Grab your free allocation of Karate tokens. No purchase required. Black pants for Fabian, white pants for Santos. Orthodox stance for both fighters here as they have a lot of early movement. Slightly taller is the Hungarian. Santos working that body with the right hand. Ooh, came up top with a blitz from Santos. Nice job. Yeah, it was good. Quick punches from Fabian, but a nice counter from Santos to school that takedown. Fabian measuring, trying to stay out of the range of that jab. Santos going to the body. Yep, second time she's done that, and I love it. That was a nice tight left hook from Fabian, oh. though. Trying to work the angles on the way in. It's her little headbutt action there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way Santos is going to that body. You don't see that a whole lot. You know, just, just focus on the body, right? And, uh, uh, yep. And it's a perfect setup. But again, you know, and then suddenly you're going to fake it. Lower yourself Ooh. with that cross. Again, that was a nice cross straight to the body. Mm -hmm. Fabian still pushing forward undeterred, though. Good shots up. Well, a quick break called there. Uh, Nice movement by Santos. I love you it. see, that's how you move backwards. Tough to hit that uh, spinning back kick with no setup. Still Fabian pushing Ooh. forwards. Good jab from Santos, Great. though. Yep. Great stiff jab. Yeah, yeah, and yeah she, she, she landed it to the body a couple of times, yeah. so straight to the jaw there was a nice change. Ooh. And oh, that's nice good work right. from Fabian. Oh, Gets reversed nice. on the trip, though. That was a nice right hand from Fabian. Meeting each other in the middle. Another right hand from Santos. She's landing and moving. Finding a range. Oh, trying the trip on the outside. They both are, but she gets the throw. Stop. Stop. Yeah, you've got to be uh, postured to throw the ground and pound there, either standing or with a knee on the opponent or immediately adjacent them. Ooh. Ooh. i got to say, I think Fabian looks a little bit more serious and focused. Santos yes. has a little bit of a, a rushed look on her face when Fabian's coming forward. It's kind of tiring whenever you're moving side to side. A little bit easier to walk forward than it is to move side to side, and that can be fairly tiring. So first round in the books there. Good work from both these ladies. Actually, I think just really reminder, good positive things fans, for both of them. Yes, they both did good. I really like the pressure that Fabian did, constantly moving that forward. Great movement as well, lowering the levels. I really like what Santos did going through the body, and then later on she found a range and she started connecting. Boss, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first takedown from Santos. It was a lovely catch of the kick here. This was Fabian finding a way in, and again, Lots of uh, combinations. Yeah, like hooks and then make it into straights. She throws two hooks and then suddenly she goes up to straights and she's connecting with it. So, Ooh. nice job. Look at that. If that left hook would have landed, that was a little of the headbutt action, I think, that we're talking about. Ah, yeah. 
I feel Santos, whenever she's closing the gap, she's keeping her chin up. She's got to watch out for yeah, that right hand. That was how she got dropped with the straight right from Amara Molina as well. And especially she has to look upwards now because exactly. her body's taller. Ooh, Ooh, gets clipped with the right hand on the way in. Oh, nice right hand. hand. Nice cross. And I was just going to say, Fabian has her chin up also a little bit. She's going to watch out. Oh, ducking into that one, though. So as we said, very even from both these ladies here. Yes. Most of the time when you attack uh, tall fighters with headshots, they lean backwards. So the next target will be a body shot, like a big left hook to the head so they can see it and then boom, cross to the body. That's right. She's, she's going to the body as uh, Fabian's coming in, but... When she throws that jab up high, she needs to throw it as she's leaning back, just yep. like you said. Oh, Ooh. nice right. Got up quick, but walked straight into a right hand again. It's a lot of forward pressure from Fabian through the first minute of this second round. Good counter over top from Santos. Ooh. Oh, walking on the cross. Girls are throwing some, ladies are oh, throwing some beautiful heat. throw. Yeah, lovely. I think it was a Haragoshi, couldn't quite see. I like her head movement also when she walks in, she moves to the left and to mm -hmm. the right, right? It's cool. And I'm talking about Fabian. Can't quite hear what uh, Mark God is, Goddard is telling her here. He said, Boss Wooden is a good looking guy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Fair comment. Don't look now, but. He's watching the fights. Again, we, we reminded you, I think, in the opening bout, aggression is, is a very highly scored bit of criteria here at Karate Combat. So the counter-striking for Santos is good, but Oof. Fabian is the one really pressing forward here, and she's landing a, a decent amount herself. But the counters from uh, Santos are good. Santos, Santos is finding it. her mark. Yep. I've, I've been enjoying the, the crispness of the left hook oh, from nice. Fabian. Up no, that's cross. Work from the Brazilian. That was nice. She up hook, cross, up hook, uppercut, hook, cross. She, she's connected with him. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Chin was up again. Oh, there we go. No, another throw. Well, not quite. Because one thing we don't talk about a whole lot is if you land a throw very cleanly there, you're you're plowing your body weight through your opponent. You're doing more body damage oh, yeah. by hitting them on the way down. And especially oh, yeah. if you land on the floating ribs here, because oh. that's where the diaphragm is attached. Right. Oof. Yeah, you give that thing a shock. It's usually the one being thrown fatigues oh. faster because it makes it harder to breathe. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a little bit of wear and tear on the face of Fabian here. That left uh, left side of her forehead. Oh, Jeez, man. a clean right there. That's a little bit dangerous from Santos turning and running away. Oh, wow, Fabian relentless though. Start. Yeah, the only thing I would say for Fabian, you know, if she works a little bit of in and out movement, yes. that would make it so much more right, a little bit, little bit predictable coming forward. Yep. Right. That's why uh, she's walking on the punch. Okay. San yeah, Santos is, she's just throwing her right hand out there. She's just running right into it. Let's yep. take a look at some of these replays here, this second round. Here we uh, go. This is a clean throw. There we go. Big Harai. Probably the cleanest we've seen so far. Boom. Oh, charging the head into yep. the chest. That, that was, was a nice. lovely overhand right. That was the hook that she just missed. Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, she lit the guard way. out of the way. Yeah, yeah. That, was that was lovely. Was nice. I didn't see that in real time, no. I gotta say. And that was a little left hook that could have been a lot worse. Santos has got to stay away from the clinch. I just feel like Fabian's just a bigger, stronger opponent, and the, the throws are there for her every yep. time. And I would really throw crosses to the body. Again, the big left hook, let her head move backwards, because if they expose her body, you land it on the solar plexus. Oh, yeah. That's it. A fantastic uh, fifth bout here. Karate Combat 38 from Miami. Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson here. Pit side for you, Melinda Fabian, Eric De Santos, going at it into their third and final round here. Oh, nice. Good strikes there from Fabian. Nice left hook, uh, Santos. There's the in and out movement. 
It's almost like she's listening in the corner <laughs> in between. Well, we are close enough, it has to be said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice cross hook. A, a lot of swelling over Santos's left eye, under Santos's left eye. Yeah, both these uh, ladies wearing a little bit of damage here. Fabian Sh calling for Santos to get up in short order. Santos, uh, sorry, uh, Fabian trying to hide behind that lead shoulder now. Wow, yeah, she's coming the whole time. And now she's in and out, she let her miss. This is good. Damn, oh, wow. That. Two of them. Yeah, two, two straight rights there. Once I start seeing an opponent start breathing hard, that's when I it clicks in my head. I should start going to the body more. Yep. Front kicks to the body, side kicks to the body. That's it, that's everything. And also when they lean back, they can't, they almost can't flex their abs. Yes. <laughs> so, body shots are great. Well, Santos doing a good job of getting out of that headlock this time. Yeah, by, by moving to the side. I like that a lot. Oh, good uppercut. She landed as... Yeah, she landed at the prior route. Uppercut hook cross. Oh, man. She, did... she is finding that right hand every time. As you said, Don Fabian is coming nothing but forward. <laughs> That's it. She should throw some roundhouse knees with her long legs. That would be great. Oh, yeah. Leaning into it. Into the final minute of this bout here. Still fainting now. Oh, nice counter by Santos. Yeah, nice knee as well. Nice, Man. switching stands and then across, that's beautiful. Yeah, and she's going low, going high. Oh, yeah. Stopping before she wanted to do something, but yeah. she realized she could uh, Santos was close the distance, so she didn't do it. That was nice. All these little moments are very important for finding, and she's pulling it off. You got it right. Oh. Throw a fake front kick. I love Man. the pressure for Fabian. Fabian. What, a, what a great fight. Yes. This was a great fight, yes. Both got shiners under the left eye. Yeah, definitely some wear and tear. I mean, I don't think we're going to get uh, a, a sudden death fourth round. I, no. I think the judges can render something from that. But uh, what do you feel, gentlemen, as we look at the replays from that third round? It, it's a hard one because uh, Santos led it some power shots. But, you know, the moving forward, the aggression, everything is for Fabian. Yes. The head movement. So in my book, I believe she's got the victory. The whole pick control, The I think Fabian landed the heavier blows. And I think that... Yeah, uh, she's coming up with the win for sure. Yeah, generally the volume and as you said, the aggression yes. constantly coming forward and it's not needless forward pressure. It was very useful and effective forward mm -hmm. pressure. And then also at the last the last round, she actually, we, we said it in between rounds, she should go in and out movement. And then she, she did started it. doing it in the third round. She yes. heard you, boss. <laughs> That's amazing, you know, when they adapt like that. So we've got, uh, we've got an official decision here. Let's go ahead and see who's going to take this bow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Melinda Fabian. So Melinda Fabian takes the win here as we thought she might. We mentioned she's had a couple of years off for a bit of a knee injury, starting to grow her own sports science conditioning business as well. And she said the goal was to get back here, and boy, did she do just that. She did just that, and she learned a lot. I mean, she came back with a bang. Let's see uh, what she's got to say. She's pit side with Layla. Melinda, so an impressive win there. Um, oh, just make sure you don't step backwards. Now tell me, the second and third round, the forward pressure meant everything. Was that part of the game plan originally? Yes, of course. I was listening to my coach as, uh, as we exercised before during training camp. He was uh, saying the same things all over and again. And that was an important win for you. Tell me what it means. Uh, it's very important when you, you have to be conscious in there. You have to listen to the tactics. If you, you know, lose one second, you, you do a mistake, you get a little bit hit. You don't stay beautiful. You have to stay nice. Congratulations. That was a big win for you. Twice now undefeated in here. Congrats.
thank you, thank you. And I want to thank for the organization for having me. It's a, a very big uh, honor to have me here. Thank you very much, Carla Combe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fabian, she is victorious here and, uh, you know, 2-0 and coming in, a bit of time off, but clearly better than ever. I'd really like to see her get some good bounce in this women's bantamweight division. Yeah, who's going to be next? I mean, her against Omira, is that the same weight class? Yes, yeah, of course, because yeah. Erica Santos fought her. So that could be a really good fight. And I think, you know, with her reach and the way she's using her reach, I'm pretty impressed. I am too, man. I mean, she, you know, she's been out for a while, like you said. She showed good poise out there, stayed calm. And like you said, she imposed her will. And listening <laughs> to her corner the whole time, making yes. adjustments as needed. A really good fight IQ. Yeah, and boss. <laughs> Listen, she listened to boss. Then what I liked also, so she throws front kicks, and then she also threw fake front kicks. Yes. So once she landed, and then she lifts her leg, and then she punches it. I love that stuff. And faking, you were talking about it, and I talked about fainting. More faints we want to see and see how effective it is. And some solid throws out there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful throws. Yeah, really, really nice. Complete. I mean, we said she was a complete, uh, complete fighter coming into the pit. She showed it. She reinforced it tonight. Uh, excellent work from Melinda Fabian. Uh, let's go and throw it to Alex Wendling one more time, who's with, uh, I believe, Tiago Silva. Oh. Yes, the girls always bring the action, and here supporting Melinda Fabian today is the legend, Tiago Silva, and man, we just saw a war. Your wifey's in the crowd, he's screaming and shouting for Melinda. Yeah. How special is it that she got to get the win tonight? Oh, that was very nice. It's very satisfying, you know. Melinda is my friend's wife for a long time. they friends from Francis the neighborhood, and I'm so happy to see her winning, you know. It's, it's very satisfying. Yes, and Melinda was the first Hungarian fighter in the UFC for a woman, and you've also competed in the UFC, but now you're getting to see this different environment. How special is it to see what karate combat does? It's completely different. It's completely different, but actually I like a lot. I like the rules, and I like the fact that you can strike and you can, and you can take people down. It's very nice. Actually, it's very fun. I would love it to do one time if I could. And we have a bunch of more action coming. Ross Levine on the main event you know, defending his middleweight championship bout, but is there any other fight that you're especially looking forward to tonight? Uh, personally, I don't know the people who's fighting. That's my first time here. I came to see Belinda, but I'm enjoying the show so much, and I, I really I really hope to see good fights. Awesome, and you have two beautiful daughters here tonight. Thank you, thank one of them you. got too shy and ran back into... Yeah, very, very shy. But we have another one that's having a great time here. Give us a big smile. How are you feeling? Good. She's feeling good. We're feeling great. We're in Miami. It couldn't get any better. Thank you so much, Thank Tiago. Enjoy the night. Have a good night. Back to Thank you guys. Much. Well, thank you, Alex Wendling and Tiago Silva. Great to have uh, a lot of fighters from different walks of life in the crowd here tonight. Guys, we have uh, just about finished with what we're kind of considering our preliminary portion of the card. We've got our uh, kind of four feature bouts coming up next. Lots to look forward to. Uh, what can everybody expect coming up? I think we, this was the, the appetizer, right? Yes. I, 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 we had some good fights also. They started getting better and better. It was perfect in order. Um, and so, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to this now. What's going to come up? These are the guys that have been at the top for a while now. And this is where it starts to really hunker down. And you can see the technique, the skill, the fight IQ, which is what I love. You know what I mean? So these guys are at another level. Yeah, four outstanding bouts coming your way next. We're going to take a very short break. Join us again shortly for more Karate Combat 38, live from Miami. We're going to have Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. Both these guys fought each other before. Oh! 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 The face spinning wheel kick to the head. Ross Levine finished Igor de Castaneda with a beautiful kick. Igor Castaneda unhappy with the decision. I hit him with a spinning axe kick and my heel hurts. He was hurt. Para mí, yo he should be very happy that he's healthy. Perhaps he could have been given a bit more time. Claro que quiero un rematch. Years passed since then. These guys are new fighters. We have a new middleweight champion, Ross Levine. I'm here to fight everybody. I'm going to wipe the entire division clean. This night, the best fighter in the division, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian Bull. Ross Levine, you might be looking at a rematch, my friend. The fans, us, we all wanted to see this fight, and that's why this was the fight for us to make. I'm here, I'm ready, and we're going to get after it again. Ross and Kobe.
Camp is great. You know, every camp, uh, I've always said this throughout my career, it's not about who my opponent is. It's about how can I get better from event to event, from week to week, from day to day. So we've been playing a lot of that to like the, the stab and then here to the hand fight. You know, right here, I'm, I'm up in Toronto with uh, Bazooka Joe Vartolini and it doesn't get much better than that. So, you know, always trying to add pieces to my game and level up my skills. You go there and back, go south park. And just see how I don't stop that beat with them. He's definitely a different martial artist. He's, he's like a, I can see how he improved much, get, getting better and better. Every time that he comes here, he's a different different athlete, different martial artist. It's, it's been amazing. Day one is always a fun one because it's getting reintegrated into the bazooka system. So it's uh, taking the stuff I remembered from last time, trying to integrate it, and then learning that next level. It's always taking a step up. Um, always like whenever I go anywhere really like any training session is putting on the white belt right empty cup mentality I feel like a lot of times when you see champions across all platforms they hold so tightly that world title and then they've hit that high and then they go in their next fight and they lose a fight they should have won so in my opinion I'm still on the hunt I'm still fighting I'm not defending my title I'm winning another title and that's what we're gonna see you know come April 1st I'm not always a huge fan of rematches, but at the pro level when, you know, you're the champion, you don't get to choose who's next. So uh, I think it's appropriate for him to be next in line. He had a great knockout in his last fight. So if he's the one who's next, then that's what we're going to do. I hope he goes training hard. You know, I know he had some injuries after his last fight, but uh, I'm looking forward to another great fight with a well-conditioned, you know, better conditioned Igor. I don't believe at all that our last fight was a fluke. I'm really not concerned about that. We've already moved on you know, long past that, so if he's still focused on what happened in that last fight, then he's in a lot of danger moving forward. Last fight was June of last year, and uh, we were hoping to get on one of the Karate Combat cards towards the end of the year, but couldn't find an appropriate opponent. So since then, it's just been staying in shape, leveling up. Ross looks great, man. Ross is always training. Ross is always in shape. He looks strong, and he's uh, more than ready to defend his title. You know, now that we're adding knees to the rule set, I've been developing all different setups and ways to bring knees back into my game. Obviously, in my previous career before Karate Combat, I was able to throw knees, and we took them out. So now getting a chance to add them back in has been uh, an awesome piece of my training and we have a lot of new opportunities to show off some skills that we've developed and we're excited to let that loose in the pit. Different, different. I think there's equal pressure for every fight. Again, I don't look at any fight, whether it's a championship fight, a contender fight, a defense. Uh, a fight is a fight. There's no additional pressure for me. Again, I just focus on getting better and better each day and uh, the rest will take care of itself. In this weight class in karate combat, the competition is catching up to me. So as long as I continue to learn and grow from fight to fight, I'm gonna be hard to stop. Ross Levine is a special combat artist. He's also on the front end of kind of the American invasion of fighters. I'm a third generation combat fighter. Both my father and brother are Taekwondo black belts. My grandfather was in the military. Fighting is in my DNA. In his first fighting, we saw Ross disassemble his opponent. He started at the bottom, worked his way up, got to the body, and he beat him up from the ground up. My second fight finished with a great TKO that went viral. My first two opponents are a perfect blend for me to lead up and fight Shaheen. He did a good job, and it was a really hard-fought victory. As the champion, I'm at the top of the mountain. I'm gonna wipe the entire division clean. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm here to do damage and walk away with that world championship. I think I'm the most hard I've done in my life. I've been training since January, knowing that the rival is Ross, and with a lot of desire to face, not Ross, but to myself and to me in that moment, to face that, and to be the champion of the world, but yes. Hey, good day. Good day, family. Métele caña. Vamos, va. Eh, nos enteramos de la propuesta del combate con Ross en enero. Yo sigo entrenando desde después de mi pelea con Franklin Mina en octubre. 
estoy entrenando siempre, así que paré un par de semanas para descansar, pero desde enero le estamos dando seis días en semana. Eh, cosas, estoy introduciendo en el entrenamiento cosas que no he hecho nunca, como la natación, para mejorar la apnea, la respiración. Yo creo que es la mejor preparación que he hecho en mi vida. O sea que con muchas ganas de demostrarme, sobre todo a mí mismo, lo que siempre hablo, de demostrarme que soy capaz y de que me puedo colgar el cinturón. Cinturón dorado, el sueño de, de Igor de 12 años, de 8 años, que estaba en el gimnasio y veía con admiración a los campeones y decía, guau, qué pasada. Pues eso es un sueño para mí y lo tengo al alcance de la mano y voy a dar todo de mí para, para lograrlo y traerlo para España. Yo lo sé, pero uno, uno, pero tú lo ves, si el tío no cae... Yo vengo del karate tradicional y entonces eh, lo he tenido a él desde pequeño, pero entonces me he dado cuenta que en esta nueva disciplina hace falta eh, las trabajar las distancias cortas, lo que nosotros hacíamos antes era diferente. Entonces he buscado a, a uno de los mejores entrenadores por la experiencia que tiene en las luchas de contacto, que es César. Entonces, eh, he visto que ha mejorado mucho distancia corta, el trabajo de esquiva, y entonces esto le ha ido pues, fenomenal, ha cambiado un montón. Bueno, yo creo que todo karateca que hace el cambio a karate combat, al final es otro, otro deporte, pues es un deporte de contacto continuo, es un deporte en el que además hay derribos, eh, bueno, eh, es bastante diferente a lo que es el karate de puntuación o karate olímpico, entonces yo creo que la motivación de todo el que entra en, en, esta, en esta promoción como es Karate Combat es llegar a lo más alto, llegar a ese título y yo creo que la motivación es, es máxima, es su, su objetivo desde el principio, eh, cuando nos juntamos para, para entrenar y para, para llevar este camino era lograrse campeón, lograr ese cinturón dorado y, y ya te digo, estamos trabajando muy duro para, para que así sea. Sí, contra Rosa aprendí sobre todo gestionar la presión. Eh, yo creo que Ross no le puedo... A ver, es mi enemigo, pero se lo tengo que agradecer todo, porque gracias a él estoy haciendo cosas que nunca he hecho para mejorar. O sea, que él es un plus para mejorar. Y en verdad le tengo aprecio y le tengo que dar las gracias. Lo que él no, te... no, no, no me podrá dar las gracias porque voy a ir a por él y voy a intentar no quedarlo por todos los medios. He is a very special Karanaka. Big, powerful, long and rangy. Y bueno, yo empecé el karate a los 12 años. Le dije a mi padre que, que quería competir. Me dijo, si quieres competir, tienes que entrenar. Entrené y salí a mi primera competición y desde entonces, pues no he parado. Empecé a los 12. When he attacks, he attacks with intense aggression and he really tries to get behind that right hand. Bueno, pues ahora que estoy en Karate Combat, eh, mi ilusión es esa, ¿no? Colgarme el cinturón. Igor, tarde o temprano, eh, estará arriba de la categoría. Hasta que no lo logre, no voy, a, no voy a parar. Aprenderé más hasta que llegue a ser un día campeón. ¡Y vamos! Well, hello and welcome back to Karate Combat 38, live from Miami, Florida. We're going to move in very shortly into the main portion of our card. Four outstanding fights coming for you, of course. Top of the bill, Bruno versus Bruno and Igor de Castaneda Woo! taking on our champion, Ross Levine. Lots to look forward to, but first, got a little bit of uh, presentation action for you from the pit. Oh, this is going to be great. We're going to see a nice little kata. And I told him that at the very end, he should do the root and jump. Let's see. So let's see <laughs> if he does that. My man Jet is a little ninja. Why not? Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Show some pipes. <laughs> uh, no prize for you, Steven. <laughs> nice.
<laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Jets. Let's go, Jets. <laughs> it's just annoying because I can't do that anymore. And it's <laughs> right better. I got to. Uh, I'll get him. You're still young to I'll ask, boss. <laughs> yeah, there's a way difference. I can beat him. So, Karate Combat 38, we've got four more fights coming your way. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what those four fights are. Hopefully, we've got a little graphic to show you. There we go. So, coming up next, we're going to see this execution of James Vick taking on Italian Gabriele Cera. That's going to be a really fun battle. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Sasha Palatnikov and Adriano Hadrabaya. That's a very, very exciting clash of styles at middleweight. Of course, only one of them is going to keep the name. Bruno versus Bruno, Assis and Souza in that feature lightweight bout. And, of course, top of the card tonight, Ross Levine taking on Igor de Castaneda for the middleweight championship. Uh, lots to discuss, gents. Just a quick word on a few of those. Um, main event, really, really exciting rematch, but exciting nonetheless. Oh, my goodness. Where, where do we start? These yeah. guys are just on another level. I mean, you got Mike Vick, who was formerly, I mean, excuse me, James Vick, who was formerly in the UFC, now in karate combat. The dude's fought the who's who's. He's been all over the place with great um, experience in the pit and in the cage. But man, I mean, he's tough, bro. I, I'm go I can't wait for that one. He's a tough guy, and I, I would like to see what he's going to do. Last time he almost didn't kick, so I believe that he now is going to kick more, is what he said, and especially using his knees, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, of course. This is the bout that we're going to see in a few moments. Uh, James Vick, the tech executioner, he's okay. returning after that loss. Uh, last time out, he wasn't really happy nope. with, with perhaps with us, but with, <laughs> with the decision. He didn't feel the decision was correct. Uh, we generally did. So a lot to prove for him, perhaps. A lot to prove, yeah. And he, and, and he said it. He doesn't want to let it go to the distance this time. But, you know, he just was boxing a lot the last time. So he didn't kick at all because he had a boxing match before it. And I think that cost him the match because, yeah, kicks simply count more than hands. Yeah, but and of course, he's taking on uh, Italian, Gabriele, Gabriele Shara, an incredibly tough, tough guy. And he's really got a point to prove. I mean, look, he, he bounced back from yes. his, his match with Ross Levine. But... He wants, to, he wants to get this one back. <laughs> he does, man. He's a soon-to-be father. Doesn't know a whole lot about his opponent, but he is ready for everything and anything. He's mentally, physically ready to go out there and rock and roll. Ooh, that's the only thing we can ask for. Rock <laughs> that's and roll. it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see that bout in uh, just a few minutes. Of course, the main event and the co-main event, still lots to talk about. We're going to talk about more later. Uh, of course, Layla and Ali has probably got a few things to say as well. Layla, how you doing? Hello and welcome to Karate Combat, the Miami edition. This is our first time in Miami, so we thought we'd bring a gift for you, a world title fight. It's Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. We've also got a featured bout. It's the Battle of the Brunos. Bruno Giassis takes on Bruno Souza. And if this is the first time you've ever watched Karate Combat, welcome to Full Contact Karate. We're going to start off the season with a super strong card. We have a title match on our hands, and it happens to be a rematch. Oh. Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. Both these guys fought each other before. <laughs> Ross Levine finished Igor de Castaneda. Tuvieron muy pronto. Claro que quiero un rematch. He was hurt. Bruno Souza is facing Bruno Assis, two of the top guys in the division. I am the real Bruno, and I improve it. I don't have to say that I'm the real Bruno. I just know it. Who is the real Bruno? We're gonna find out. Sasha Palatnikov versus Adrian Hadribaj. I'm really looking forward to this, my judge. James Wick versus Gabriela Chera. So lots to look forward to coming up later, of course. Now it's going to be James Vick and Gabriele Chera. Uh, we've had a quick word about it already, but we'll just reiterate a few points. Um, you know, James Vick, he really does, like, you, Bash, you and I sat down with him on Thursday. Yep. We had a word with him. It was an interesting conversation because he really has this vibe that he's something to prove. 
Yes, yes, because of course we we agreed with the judges the last time, you know, that he we thought he lost the fight, you yeah. know, and it's never fun to hear. But I think that once I thought when he, what, he would see the fight, that he thought, okay, you yeah, know, I should have thrown more kicks. But what it does though is put you in a better uh, frame of mind this time. Exactly. And he's going to go in for the kill. And, uh, and it's going to be better for us, going to be better for him as well. After a fight like that, you know, especially losing, hopefully rekindles that flame and gets you ready to rock and roll and be more dominant in that next fight. Don't leave it up to the judges. That's it. And of course, his opponent, Gabriele Chara from Italy, he's got a lot of pit experience. I mean, he's got five fights already, mixed record, two and three, but he, he bounced back from that fight with Moslerine uh, very well with a, a decision win against Jonathan Broad at KC35. Yeah, but we were talking about it, and uh, uh, Stephen already said it, he, he doesn't know anything about his opponent. I go, what, what? But you didn't even watch him. And he said, no, he didn't want to watch any fight. And I go, I don't know if it's a smart thing to do, because I like to go back in yes. time and see, pick things out that they always do, you know, the same things. But he didn't do it. He's going to be fresh. He's going to just react, I guess. I guess, man. You have to be, you know, be able to adapt to your opponent out there. But I don't think he cares what his opponent brings. He doesn't care about that. He's only worried about what he's going to bring to his opponent. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the head-to-head. -head. James Vick and Gabrielle Chella. James Wick versus Gabriela Chera. Wick had an interesting debut. He fought against Jorge Perez and he lost. He was very, very upset. Neither one of us landed anything solid. I pressured the whole time. Uh, I clearly won the second and the third round. And now he's taking on Gabriela Chera from Italy. He won his fight in 2022 against Johnny Bro. Vic is gonna be a more experienced opponent with his extended background in the UFC, but Chera said he wants to fight James Vick. Ladies and gentlemen, our sixth bout of the evening is a welterweight contest. Our first competitor fighting out of the blue corner, representing Italy, welcome the toughest animal, Gabriel. Chiara! You know, Gabriele Chiara from Italy. 2 3 0 is his record. As we said, picked up the decision win last time out. Said so he's had a very good training camp, feeling physically and mentally good, always ready for the next fight. Um, but he's not overlooking this opponent. He said he's thought very long and hard through how this battle could go. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He is representing the red, white, and blue, the United States, the Texecutioner, James Vick! 36-year-old James Vick, uh, high advantage in this one, six foot three, as you'll see in the tail of the tape in a few minutes. Uh, real mover, volume striker. We're gonna see a lot of volume, I think, from him this one. He's told us as much, and we're gonna see a lot more kicks than we saw last time out. Tail of the tape for this one. Toughest animal, Gabrielli Chera, 34 years old, 5'9". Taking on, as you'll see in a moment, six foot three. <laughs> Very interesting look from uh, Gabrielli in the corner there, almost seeming a little bit nonplussed. <laughs> it's executioner James Vick looking to rebound from that loss last time out <laughs> against uh, George Perez, lost a, a unanimous decision a couple of months ago. All right, fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Kampai Pandas, don't just join the club, own it. KampaiPandas.com. Your referee for this one, Wayne Spinola, Gabriele Chara in the white. It's executioner James Vick in the black. Three threes on the clock. Ooh, a little filling out here, nothing too crazy, a little faint. You know, just that, you see, it's already get your opponent on his toes. Yes, sir. I love it, and again, uh, suddenly it's a real one. Now, his bouts uh, last time out, James Vick said he'd been coming off uh, a pretty intensive boxing camp for a boxing match, and that was why he was so hand-focused. He hadn't quite got into the groove of, of the kicking game that he wanted, and he said it's going to be very much a different nice. case this time. Nice check from, from Vick there. Nice side kick. Should have countered it. 
Yeah. There's a kick, the low kick, yeah. calf, boom. Oh, a little Superman punch there. I know what those are about. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Was that a hook kick? That, that was that a hook, hook kick, kick to yeah. the head. Oh, nice. Chera swing. Huge, Ooh. wide shots. Nice low calf kick there. Those look brutal. Yeah. Well, he's starting with intention, that's for sure. Vic marching him into the corner here. Nice cross there. Hi, Vic. <laughs> You got to be careful though, because when you back somebody up like that, it's like backing up a, a, a dog. They get really defensive, really, and they want to go out there and uh, <laughs> get dangerous because uh, you're backing them up. You got to lower your stance, but he's walking forward. Yep. Again, a lot of forward pressure from James Vig. Lovely work with the reach there. It's good. He's mixing it up now. Yes. You see, this is the way. This Beautiful. is the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We got a lot of different uh, kicking volume, but it's a big pickup attempt from the Italian. Well, they're going to stalemate out here on the ground. Both of them happy to do so. I wonder why he didn't throw, try, try to struggle. He was holding him. Oh, gotcha. Under his arms. Yeah, had a good overhook control, did Vic. Both these guys actually with a, a lot of multidisciplinary experience. A lot of grappling, a lot of wrestling, a lot of striking, obviously. Oh, I love the blitz oh, there from him. Yeah. yeah, he did. The blitz is something he did say we would see. He did also potentially hit a flying knee as well, so. That was like the, the right and then the left straight. Right, with that kind of cross step. Yeah, to go I love forward. That you can cover so much space. It's so effective. Everybody, everybody expects to cross hooks, so if you don't yes. cross straight, oh, it's a good move. <laughs> End of the first round there. Good work from both guys, but certainly a, a All right, fight fans, you can wear the same time. gloves our fighters wear. He's got a shot of Gabrielli Chetta in the corner there. Let's take a look at some of the replays. There is the kick. Side kick to the Your face. Ball. I mean, there was one point here where Vic threw, I think, four different kicks in four successive strikes. Really good work to mix it up. This yep. was a takedown attempt where they were tied up on the ground. And again, the toughest animal, Gabrielli Chero, trying to close the distance there. And those takedown attempts, you can very much grab the legs when you're catching a kick and driving forward off it. Oh, yeah. I think Vix's blitz with that reach that he's got is really playing a big part in this yep. fight. Do you feel he's using that, that six foot three reach effectively at the moment? You know, I think oh, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 With, with his legs, not only with his hands, but with his legs as well, using the side kick, using the front kick. And then the timing on the blitz is key, I think. Yeah, that was really nice. So perhaps that first round going to the American. Let's see how this second begins. Another three on the clock. Chara just trying to manage the range there. Chara tried his own wild blitz there for a second. That was second. nice. That was good. He wasn't holding. It was perfect. That was a nice knee by Vic. Nice low calf kick there. Mm -hmm. You could hear it from here. Again, Vic is pressing Ooh, nice. Chera up against the pit wall. Hasn't been able to make that pay dividends too much yet. But he's getting him right into the corner again. Chera's good. He stays on the outside the whole time. Using movement. He's no, selling the feints, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Now, let's see if Vic starts picking the pace up here. He called for a lot more volume. He's been a little bit subdued through this first minute and a half here. There we go. It's getting past Vic's reach is what's so difficult. And the feints, of course, because you don't know when it's coming. He's picking that leg up, and Chair is definitely reacting to every little thing that he throws. This is where he wants to be right here. He's looking for the take. Rick Lane, back up. 
Vai. Nice from James Vick. Ooh. Tried the flying knee. Stop, 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 stop. Good sprawl to clear the catch of the leg. Straight back oh, into nice. it. Lovely surging up a cup with the backhand. Nice spin back kick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that kick following straight off the punch. Really, really nice work from the Tex executioner. Yeah, got him leaning, that's for sure. There's another one. I'm surprised he let him up there. Ten seconds. Oh, that was slick from uh, Gabrielli. <laughs> That was nice. Yeah, tricky, nice way for tricky. him to end the round. I don't know if it's going to quite outdo the volume of no. work from James Vick, but it's going to make for a nice replay, that's for sure. Plus, he was in the air when he kicked, so that muscle is completely relaxed. And it's going to do some damage. Oh, yeah. You can see Vick, especially when he walks back to the cage, a little bit slower for mm -hmm. those low calves, that low was calf a, kicks. A clean jab from Vick. Again, he backed the Italian up over and over again towards the corner. He's, he's the, the right that he did to yeah, cross and then the, the left straight. Oh, yeah. That was nice on the blitz. He did it twice. It's probably going to show now. That oh, no, uppercut. Yeah, yeah, up yeah that was nice. And that was really clean. Oh, well. yeah. Straight, straight up right the middle the, of the guard. Yep. That was the last kick. Sound a slight. What, is there a proper name for that guy? It's like a sliding soccer kick. So, yeah. It's like uh, Ali versus Inoki. Remember <laughs> that fight? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was doing that the whole time. <laughs> Kicking the calves while falling on the ground. Well, third and final round underway here. Vic immediately opening with those long rangey kicks again. <coughs> Backing his opponent up. Ooh, nice, nice. right hand. That again. Nice again. Landed that left hand. Vic has it. Right again. Oh, he dazed it. It looked like. Oh, big uppercut. He's going hard yeah. in this third round. Oh, oh lovely nice. off balance from Vic. Oh. Landing some heavy ground pound. He's got to get one knee off the ground. I like the urgency from Shadow, though. Yeah, he knows. He's losing this fight. He's got to yep. go out there and knock his opponent out. Nice, that long blitz, man. Same thing, man. He's super good with it. Ooh. Ruchera is trying to find an opening, but he's being forced to cover over and over again. Right after the kick, he's going to come. Miss him. I think the, I can't speak Italian, but I think the corner are calling for him to, to try and back Vic up a little bit. Oh, and that's uh, stop, 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 stop. keeping oh, himself oh. a little bit off balance there. I mean, it's one thing to throw all your power into it, but you got to keep yourself on your feet. About halfway through this final round, still three more outstanding bouts coming your way. Oh, good check hook there from from Chair, but. Vic's using his range, man. He's got to keep using his range. He has a tendency whenever he blitzes, Vic kind of stretches his arms out, leaving his head open. Ooh, yeah, that's so good. he's got to be careful. Jerry needs to go. Yeah, we're into the final minute now. There's not going to be a whole lot of time if they tie up too often. Stop, stop. Count the break in the five seconds on the ground. It's going to eat the clock up very quickly. If Jared keeps playing this game, he's going to lose. He's got to go now. He has to. Yeah, and he showed a bit of that intent earlier in the round. He just haven't seen it since. Oh, 
Well, last couple of seconds yeah. here. Ten seconds. James Vick is probably going to take this one. Final flurries. Good in and out movement by Vick as well. <laughs> I think they meant they meant to uh, the show some respect there and. Uh, he tried to snap him right. on his shoulder. <laughs> James Vick raising his hands up. He believes he's done enough yep. to earn the victory here. Definitely, man. Look what you did. Use that range to full advantage. Yes, sir. Now let's take a look at some of the replays from the third round. Bar stalk us through these. That was the counter left hook, and then he started connecting with a few shots. But as soon as he did that, he stopped. That was, uh, oh, that was that trip. That was so beautiful. Oh, yeah. So nice and relaxed. For him to see that, it was just there, boom, and then landed it. You see, but every time when you throw a hook, the tall fighters lean back. back. And I go, dude, go for body. Go for oh. the body. Gee. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, it was. Well, we do have a judge's decision here, pit side. Let's throw it down and get the official decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, representing the United States, the executioner, James Vick. So James Vick settles his karate combat record. At one and one, exactly what he wanted to do. He is going to head up in a couple of moments, pit side, as he celebrates, very <laughs> rightly so. He's going to get a few words with our colleague, Layla. James Vick, a beautifully aggressive bout to start off the main card. Did that go down how you expected? Uh, not at all, honestly. Um, uh, I, I see why his name is the toughest animal. He's tough. He's tough. Um, uh, I didn't hit him as clean as I wanted to. Man, uh, these point karate guys know how to read range very well. It's hard to hit them. Way harder than I'm used to. Um, uh, they know how to step off of stuff very well, especially kicks. They're not easy to hit with kicks, but um, I mean, he's a tough dude, man. He took it, and um, uh, I didn't hit him as clean as I wanted to in my right hand, but uh, much respect to him. Were you surprised at how resilient your opponent was? For sure. I just didn't feel like I landed a big shot either. I mean, these that's two fights now. These guys are hard to hit, you know? Um, uh, they're not easy to hit, they know how to read range. There are two fights here now that you're making a name for yourself. What are we expecting from you next? I mean, you know, I love karate. You know, I've been doing karate now for about six years. I have about eight years of Taekwondo. So, you know, I've really embraced traditional martial arts and, you know, I, I love it. I'm, uh, yeah. Hopefully back in here, I, I need to get a finish. Excited to wait for it. Thank you very much. And, uh, next week is my son's birthday. Happy birthday, James Jr. Love you. Thank you. If you talk to a or a sports psychologist, they'll tell you the, what you want from your fighter on fight night is to express himself authentically, but temper it with intelligence and strategy. And this is straight country, straight Texas, and he came out like a gunslinger firing from both barrels. But he was also intelligence, played with the distance, and you saw him put together strategy. Throw a low kick, next time it's to a Superman punch, next time it's to a fake Superman punch, to a kick. Intelligence, strategy, and some old boy country. James Vick, that was a great performance, my friend. Thank you, uh, Robin, for your insight there. Uh, guys, last final final thoughts on that bout. Couple of questions, Bass, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, you know, James Vick said he didn't feel his opponent uh, in his previous bounce reacted well to blitzes and tended to go straight back. It's pretty much the case, right? No, it's very smart because he landed it over and over again, and especially with his length, and Stephen was talking about it. For somebody who's that tall and is still using his reach, you know, it's hard to, to, to find, you know? Like I said, he's really good at it. Some fighters are really good at it, and James right now did really well at it. Look yeah. at that. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. blitz Beautiful. over and over again. Um, Wonderboy James Vick had, had also said, you know, he's very honest with himself. But uh, he's not a, a forward pressure fighter. He doesn't like taking the lead. He prefers to counter punch. But he felt he had to come out and do that. And, uh, you know, he wasn't necessarily sure how it was going to go. But it went pretty well for him. I thought it was great. I mean, compared to his last fight, he was more aggressive. He did exactly what he said he was going to do and pressure his opponent. Come out firing. 
And like you said, he used his reach and his legs and in his hands and great takedowns. I mean, he came out with the win. He did very well. It's very smart. I can only see him getting better now because now he feels oh, yeah. that attacking for him is actually really good. <laughs> yeah, great win for James Vick. Uh, he's going to head back to Texas. Hopefully we'll see him again soon. Why don't you guys at home go ahead and take one more quick look at our main event coming up just a little bit later. He is a very special karate guy. Big, powerful, long, and rangy. Y bueno, yo empecé el karate a los 12 años. Le dije a mi padre que, que quería competir. Me dijo, si quieres competir, tienes que entrenar. Entrené y salí a mi primera competición y desde entonces, pues no he parado. Empecé a los 12. When he attacks, he attacks with intense aggression and he really tries to get behind that right hand. Bueno, pues ahora que estoy en Karate Combat, eh, mi ilusión es esa, ¿no? Colgarme en el cinturón. Igor, tarde o temprano, eh, estará arriba de la categoría. Hasta que no lo logre, no voy, a, no voy a parar. Aprenderé más hasta que llegue a ser un día campeón. ¡Y vamos! Ross Levine es un especial combat artist. He's also on the front end of kind of the American invasion of fighters. I'm a third generation combat fighter. Both my father and brother are Taekwondo black belts. My grandfather was in the military. Fighting is in my DNA. In his first fighting, we saw Ross disassemble his opponent. He started at the bottom, worked his way up, got to the body, and he beat him up from the ground up. My second fight finished with a great TKO that went viral. My first two opponents are a perfect blend for me to lead up and fight Shaheen. He did a good job, and it was a really hard-fought victory. As the champion, I'm at the top of the mountain. I'm going to wipe the entire division clean. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm here to do damage and walk away with that world championship. Guys, this is a really exciting main event coming up later, just because, you, you know, you've got... Uh, you've got De Castaneda, who's still got something to prove here, but you've got Ross Levine, who's had, I don't know what, 25, 26 weeks off to do nothing but think about his next fight. <laughs> and he said that he used those weeks to train, train, train. Yeah. So he's going to be strong. He does a lot of power training as well. So yeah, uh, something we'll talk about later, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but we're going to move straight on. We've got uh, three more bouts coming your way. Next up, really interesting clash here, Sasha Politnikov going to take on uh, Adrian Hadrobayev, uh, sorry. And uh, let's start with, with Politnikov. Uh, Guai Lo, originally hailing from Hong Kong, and now uh, training at a syndicate in Las Vegas. Uh, he had a really good uh, fight first time out, Bas. Uh, really looking forward to seeing this guy back. Very, very complete. I believe so, yeah. So he, he came back and he said, well, uh, that, you know, it feels much better than last time. But you won last time. But oh, you, yeah. He said there were some holes. He said... About his opponent, he says he has his chin up when he attacks. He believes that his opponent is good, but lately he hasn't been fighting the toughest competition, so he's not seeing any problem. And Bass, he said he's put on about 10 pounds of mass. He wants to move the mass around at middleweight like he did at 170, which is pretty fast. Oh, yeah, over uh. a short amount of time, all those muscles are going to need oxygen, so you better stock up with your breathing muscles. Yeah, uh, Wonderboy, his opponent tonight, our first Albanian fighter that we've had. A really big following for him back home, although he, he lives in Detroit, uh, Michigan, over here in the U.S. Um, he's primarily been focused on MMA. Yes. Got a really good record there, um, but he's got big karate accolades as well. I love it, man. This guy took this fight on a week and a half notice, actually, but he says he feels great. He's always in shape, and, you know, his best weapons is his experience. And he said he wants to finish this fight with a head kick. I'm, I'm excited, baby. Yeah, I'm excited for the head kicks. Yeah, during our interviews, you know, we, we really thought this could be a, a very, very exciting clash. Uh, so debutant Adrian Hadrabaev is taking on Sasha Politnikov. Let's roll the head-to-head. -head. Sasha Politnikov versus Adrian Hadrabaev. Sasha fought in the UFC. Happened, right? It was an awesome experience coming out, competing in karate combat, making my debut, making an impact, letting everybody know what's up. I am Adrian Hadribe. I come from Albania. Andre fought with a super clean record of 12 and 2 in MMA. I don't 
carry whoever's there. Just hope they sign the contract, show up on the fight day, and we get it done. I love being on the books. I'm expecting him to bring the heat. Honestly, I'm not worried. I can go out there, put this guy out, and make it look good. I see Sasha is going to come face at me. He's going to throw a kick. I'm going to grab that kick. Sweep him. I'm going to change the whole entire game. Just another day of the office, another day of having fun. Yeah, this could be really good. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a middleweight contest. Our first competitor fighting out of the blue corner. He represents Albania. Adrian, the Eagle, Hadrivia. So welcome to Karate Combat, the Eagle. Adrian uh, Hadrabayev, 12 and 2 pro MMA record coming into this one. He said he aims to be the most well-rounded fighter he can be. He thinks tonight he's got to try not to rush, he's got to wait, and he's got to be patient because an extremely competent and dangerous opponent. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He hails out of Hong Kong. Sasha Guilo Palatnikov! Guilo, the white devil, Sasha Palatnikov, originally from Hong Kong. And as I mentioned, now training at Syndicate MMA in Las Vegas. Has been there for quite some time. Actually played professional rugby when he was in Russia temporarily as well. So extremely well-traveled athletic individual. Tail of the tape here. As you can see, that 0-0 debut on. There's going to be a reach disadvantage as well, so pay attention to those numbers in this middleweight bout. Politnikov standing at six foot. That 1-0 record, of course, that was a good win last time out against Rob Buxton at Karate Combat 37 in December. Looking to build on that forward in this higher weight class. Mark Goddard, your referee for this evening. Okay, fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Kampai Pandas, don't just join the club, own it. KampaiPandas.com. So we are underway here. Sasha Politnikov in the black pants. Adrian Hadrabayev in the white. Interestingly, some strapping and some taping on the feet Ooh. of Politnikov. Mm -mm. Quick with that jab cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tense. Oh, come yeah. on. Tense, I think, come is the on. word you're searching for. Yeah. Good strikes from Adrian. Yeah. Runs a, a very successful karate dojo oh, up oh, in nice. Michigan. Good catch of the kick. It's a nice blitz from Politnikov, though. <laughs> oh. I love the faint. You know what he's thinking now. Mm -hmm. You know what Adrian's thinking. Oh, oh nice left hook. Coming down low with the right hand up top with the left hook from my man Sasha. That was nice. Go for the body again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and of course. Uh, <laughs> Hadrabayev is not grounded again against the wall, I'll remind you, so they were able to keep that flurry going. Did a good job of working his way back up, though. He blocked that left hook, the outside block. That was pretty cool oh, yeah. on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that a lot. Again, both these guys carrying their guard very low as they move in. Count the left hook from Hadrabayev, very good. Do it a few times. Missed, but it was There it is again. Oh, Ooh, good combination from Politnikov. Lands like, cleanly. I like the head movement after the exchanges from Sasha. He's moving that head. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's got to be careful there, though. <laughs> Get nicked. That was so close. 
Oh, and again, Politnikov lands as Hadrabayev backs up. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good oh, work from Hadrabayev to follow up there. The front flip stomp. <laughs> that was crazy. Sasha's leading in with his head a lot with, those, with some of those exchanges. Yeah, he's got to be careful with the headbutts. He's, he's kind of hoping that he's going to be able to stay in there and roll and go with it, backing the Albanian up once more. Good frame and a knee. Yeah, both of them felt their heads. Yeah, accidental clash of heads there. I'm uh, just going to get a second. They're getting a, a warning about head placement. It's one of those things you just got to rub it and keep on moving. <laughs> rub some dirt on it. Oh, oh. good blitz from Hadrabayev. Strength in the turnover there. And that is the closing seconds. Great first round for most guys. But yes. Yeah, getting settled in quite well, it has to be said. So here we go with some of the replays. Hadrabayev getting some shots in. It was a lot of good forward motion from Politnikov. This was early on when he backed him up. <laughs> the, uh, double foot stomp. The double jumping forward flip foot stomp. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I've got to say, Hadrabaya followed up very nicely off that he with did. a couple of quick shots. Mm -hmm. Stayed very calm. Nice little uppercut there. Both touch their head. They go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but on the break, was a nice little uppercut. Guys, do you have a, a? I mean, it's a tough round to score. Do you? Are you leaning one way or the other as of yet? I'm leaning towards my man Sasha over yeah, here. Me too, because he moved forward more. Yeah. A lot of good head movement. Landed some clean shots. Oh, again, the oh, left man. hook. He lands it constantly, the right body left it to the head. Yeah, and he slipped really nicely on the uh, the inside there to then come up for the left hook. Oh, oh I just got to watch out. Politnikov oh. for the left hook. Yeah, Politnikov getting a lick in at the end, but Hadrabayev has got some oomph behind oh. those shots. Poletnikov has got a skull of granite. Oh, yeah, well, he ate something, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Shaking it off. Hadrabayev not, uh, not trying to take the opportunity to counter. Good little searching left there. Yeah, and, and it's so relaxed the way he throws it also. If I was Sasha's uh, coach, I would say front kicks down the middle. I need more front kicks down the middle. Yeah, those hands, right? Yes. Soften them up a little bit. Adrian's coming back. Yeah, yeah, he's doing good. That right hook also might find it's starting. He's got to watch out. Uh, it's the second time he's caught the kick there. He wasn't able to capitalize, but good awareness. Polinikov's constant coming forward, though. Oh, body shot. <laughs> Two lefts and a right. Hadjabayev looking to come back now. Again, more head movement from Politnikov. Every time on the break, the counter left, who's going to watch? <laughs> Leading with the head again. Hadrabayev's throwing, but he's having to do a lot of throwing, moving backwards. Yes. And that was very nice, very clean. Not a tremendous amount of power, but scoring. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. 40 seconds left here. Do you feel that Politikov is becoming a little bit predictable? I think so. I think I really do. I mean, he's uh, he's kind of walking forward at this point and giving his, giving his opponent a cue, because every time he walks and then settles down, his opponent knows he's coming. Yep. The cross body, I should flip it. I should cross liver. 
and then, you know, because she's doing a right cross with the body and left it to the head, flip it around now. That lead left from Andromayev has found the mark a couple of times and now, and this time he catches the kick and capitalizes. Closing seconds here of round number two. It's one on one, maybe, then, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, Sasha looks a little, he looks a little fatigued. I mean, he's walking forward, not staying in good position. And then you have uh, Adrian over, over here backing up, backing up, luring his opponent in and just sitting down on that right or left hand. Yeah, that was a nice little switch kick, as we see on the replay from Politnikov. But Hadrubayev had his moments. That was a good example of that lead left as Politnikov came in. That was a good combo by Politnikov, though. And again, the catch of the kick and the yep. counter. And as you say, you know, we, we never know quite which way the judges are going to go, but it could very much be 1-1 going into this one. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good time here, pit side. Karate Combat 38 live from Miami, Florida. Join us again, of course, May 20th is our next event here, following the launch of our Karate Combat token on May the 10th. Now, it's up for grabs, let's yep. say. Who so. wants it more? Who's who's going to impose that will this round? Yeah, very much all to play for moving into this one. I, I feel like both these guys have the capability to get stuck in and dig deep. But just oh, yeah. get that vibe. <laughs> oh, and is he? OK, I mean. Like, Bass, you may remember Sasha Politnikov last time out in December suffered an eye poke. Yep. That really put the 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 jinx on that fight for him. He still came away. Let's have a look. Headbutt. Oh, it was a head to the eye. Yep. Yep, yep but that's unintentional. Yeah, that ab absolutely unintentional. Yep. And I'm sure he's going to tell Mark Goddard he's got no <laughs> problems whatsoever. Get, get me back in. Yep. Rugby player, nice run, kick to the body. Constant pressure, constant pressure. Again, though, that left lands and a right. He's complaining, but the referee's going to tell him to keep fighting. Again, headbutt. again. Wow. That's, yeah. yeah, the whole time. Do you feel it? I mean, it, it's, it is accidental, right? They're just yeah. getting stuck in the pocket, and right. that's what's going on. They're so close right now, and they're trying to throw those looping strikes. And they're almost looking down. They're just swinging their head back and forth. Obviously, ending with a headbutt. Giraffes. Did you ever see them fight each other? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. God, so God. Like this. I, I guarantee nice Mark Goddard has just told him to say, you fight, and I'll call the, the fouls if they happen. This is the kind of fight right here Sasha wants. He wants that inside. He wants to just sit down and throw. I mean, he did say to us that he's very thankful that Hadrabayev stepped up on short notice to, to take this bout. Hadrabayev actually competed in February. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, in, in another uh, competition. So, quick turnaround for him. Uh, strike in action here by Plotnikov. Oh, nice right hook. Popped up with the right hook as well. Yep. Coaches are saying pressure, pressure, pressure. Oh, he's... Trying to hold the headlock there on the ground. We got less than a minute. Let's go. Again, forward pressure from Politnikov. He's landing now. Both fighters looking for a break here. Final 30 seconds. You want to start? Thinking maybe a fourth. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That could be very well happening now. Very Good outside good. trip. Oh, it's a ground a pound. I think this is where he takes it away right here. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, he's trying to be a showman. <laughs> we do appreciate that, but uh, not finding the mark there. Last opportunity. Little clash in the middle. We're going to go to a judge's decision. Tough one. A very really tough one. Yeah, I agree. I think it was in that third round fairly even. Maybe, maybe he gets away with, with that takedown. I don't know. 
is the pushing forward. Yeah, the they pressure. Say, oh, the aggressor is going to win the it's match. It's the question of did, did he land enough shots in the action of coming forward? Because he certainly did eat a few there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You yeah. know, you can't completely uh, re rely on just forward pressure. It's got to be effective. Yeah, and Adrian, he was he was moving backwards, but he was connecting while he was moving yeah. backwards. And yeah. that's a very hard skill uh, to possess. Well, we're sitting pretty close to the commission here, pit side, as they're, they're taking a look. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And we have got an official decision here. Let's go down into the pit and find out who's going to take this one, Politnikov or Hadrabayev. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. He is out of the blue corner representing Albania, Adrian the Eagle Hadrabia. Well, there you are. We have our answer, Adrian Hadrabia, taking that third round. Obviously doing enough of the, uh, the counter striking as Politnikov came forward and a look of relief on the face of the Albanian. I mean, you know, say you take the fight on a week and a half notice. <laughs> you got to feel pretty good about that, taking out uh, a, a guy who we expected a lot from in Sasha oh, yeah. Politnikov. Yeah, Politnikov is a very good fighter. So this uh, puts him on the map. Well, let's go ahead. He's going to head up uh, pit side and get a few words with Layla. Congratulations now, as that was finished, how confident were you that you had that win? Honestly, I come in to do my, this fight with Thor Meniscus. I wasn't able to fight, but I took the fight and I fight over. I didn't say that anything. I fought with one knee today. And trust me, guys, you got to believe on yourself. No matter what, it's been the hardest camp. I took the fight in one notice. I just had a, a fight three, four weeks ago. I was totally injured. But I said yet to the fight because I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, I'm Albanian. So I came here and proved it. So it was almost one of my best nights of my life today. Well, it was brilliant to watch. Now you're describing it as one of the best nights of your life. Yet your opponent must have, without a doubt, frustrated you in there. You seemed frustrated in element. I seemed frustrated. No, I wasn't. I woke up this morning all this week. I was not able to walk. I was limping. So I came here to fight one of the top guys who was in UFC. I, trust me, I had 1% I'll pull this off, but I pulled it because I fought my heart. Congratulations, my friend. Well done. Thank you so much. I got them. To properly appreciate how big a win that is for Adrian, we must first talk about how special Sasha is. The man that Adrian beat is a very rare and a difficult man to fight. Some fighters are artists. They make, they paint these beautifully violent pictures. Some are athletes. They run plays out there. And some are dogs, fighters, gritty, gritty fighters. Sasha is all three. And on short notice, Adrian accepted a fight against a man like that, had to fight backing up, land shots backing up, absorb the dog attitude, and, and temper it and weather the storm and land just enough. I thought it was a very close fight. It could have gone either way. Congratulations, Adrian. It's not just a big win, it's who it's over that makes it so big. Yes, thank you, Robin Black, for that analysis. And as he said, Bass, it's not just a big win, it's who it's over. Sasha Politnikov was really highly talented. He looked incredibly good in his karate combat debut. Uh, Adrian Hadrabayev has just put a, a bit of a kibosh on his plans. He did. You know, he was very good at moving backwards and connecting while he was moving backwards. Like I already said, the skill is a very hard to possess a skill like that. Now, we actually have some stats to look at at this Whoa. one. Oh, we're going to do some replays first, and then we'll see some... Some stats coming up. So talk us through the replays here. Wonderboy, what did you think of uh, Hadrabayev's performance? You know, it, it's all on where, what kind of judges you got, too. Because, yeah, sometimes you have the judges that don't count that when you're back up track, and then you got some judges that do count it. But I thought he did very well backing up, luring in, luring in Sasha and landing those left and right hands. So I thought it was a very smart game plan and very difficult to hit. Yeah, the catch of the kick was good. I, he just, you know, seemed to be... Really on the ball with what he needed to do when uh, when the pressure was coming on him. 
great right hook, great left hook. And I mean, it's it's you know it's really interesting when you now consider. I mean, it, it's we'll look at the stats and then we'll, we'll make that point in a second. But so strikes landed overall. Actually, Politnikov a little bit higher on the, on the strikes overall landed. But of course, it does matter about the severity of those strikes, the cleanliness, the target areas of those strikes as well. Uh, the judges deeming that Adrian Hadrabayev getting the better there. But as you can see, a very very close fight. Yes, and I, you know. How do we really factor in? Uh, I don't know what to make of the fact that he is saying he was injured with his knee. I mean, he did joke with us, Bass, when we said, hey, how did you come out of your fight a few weeks ago? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we knew kind of ready. He's got a, he's got an injury. Yeah. But it was a big injury. He said he was limping. So he, he acted well. Did not show it one it. bit. Yep. Did not show it one bit. No, digging deep indeed. I'm very much excited to see what Adrian Hadrabayev can do when he returns to karate combat after healing up a little bit. Uh, feature bout coming up next, Battle of the Brunos. Go ahead, take a quick look at this preview. The Battle of the Brunos. Aziz versus Sousa. I am the real Bruno. It's my name. Bruno is one of the best guys in the division. Brazilians are fighters by nature. You can expect a lot of aggression on this fight. Every little movement is calculated out there. I'm prepared to fight against the best fighters in the world. Let's see if the dragon's gonna eat again and stay hungry. He's one of the most experienced guys, but I've been fighting everybody. They are fearless, relentless, and they go forward, and they want to finish their opponent. Nobody's gonna back up. I fight for knockout every time, and this fight's not different. I'm just ready to knock him out. So it is uh, feature bout time. Uh, Bruno Assis taking on Bruno Souza. Really, really excited for this bout because we mentioned before their namesakes, they're both Brazilian, but they are very different fighters, Bass. And, and Bruno Assis, he's all about the power. He, that's exactly, and he said also no more decision. He wants knockouts from now on, although he had a bunch of knockouts already. Um, well, he knows his opponent moves a lot. Uh, it's not going to be a problem. He says he's going to push the action. He trained an alpha male as well, so we're going to expect some wrestling, you know, mixed in with striking will be a very smart thing. This guy is a very respectful guy. Once he steps into the pit, that's where he becomes the white dragon. You will see it. But but when he gets hit, normally people, you know, they smile or they laugh, but that means that hurts. Him is the opposite. It's almost that it gives him energy. It's a really weird thing because he gets hit and he comes harder back. And, and it's nice to see him branching out in his training a bit more, trying to trying to really improve. That, it's a smart thing. I mean, going to Alpha Male, I would do the same thing because oh, once yeah. he takes a shot, he takes him down, and at the second time, it could be a fake, a setup for a cross or whatever it is. So I love it. Yeah, let's see if the volume of training partners pays dividends. Uh, Wonderboy, by contrast, Bruno Souza, he's very laissez-faire. He's a bit more flowy, a bit more in and out. He is, man, and he said he's coming to this fight with no injuries. He said he will attack the body more. Last time he was head hunting, so this time he's going to attack the body more. And he says wherever the fight goes, he's going to be ready for it, and he wants a KO. Absolutely. Uh, should we go ahead and ask our favorite Canadian what he thinks? Mr. Robin Black, thoughts on this one, sir? Guys. Listen, sometimes fights, to really do them justice, to really explain them, you gotta go into detail. It's like complex stuff. Like a, a million divided by 33 carry the X. Other times it's like a big crayon and you just spell it out. This is one of those times. We got flowy Bruno versus streamy Bruno. Streamy Bruno will be aggressive. Flowy Bruno will try to be the matador and use that aggression against him, right? Do you think uh, Do you think one of them really does have to lose their name after this one? I think the winner keeps the name Bruno and the loser must take the name, let's say, a noble name, like <laughs> Kermit. The loser must be Kermit. <laughs> but this is a really fun clash of styles, isn't it? It really is. The aggression of Bruno Assis, Screamy Bruno, versus that flowy, artistic game of Flowy Bruno. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful fight. Loser gives up the name Bruno. I'm Kermit. Good with that. Um, okay. Let's roll it head to head. Flowy Bruno and Screamy Bruno. <laughs> Assis versus Souza. Bruno is one of the best guys in the division. 
I always want the hardest fight possible. I'm prepared to fight against the best fighters in the world. If I'm fighting guys that I'm supposed to beat, why I'm fighting? Bruno, the Tiger Souza, a protege of Machida Karate. It's a big name to be, it's heavy, but I'm more than used to you. And having them in the audience, it's amazing. They told me that Sensei Machida was here. I was like, oh my God, I cannot screw up on this one. Do you feel pressure today? Nah, it's okay. I'm one of the most well-rounded fighters in karate combat. Every little movement is calculated out there. We don't miss shots. I was thinking I was a tiger right there. In front of Master Machida, he did well, my boy. And our portal springs to life. The dragon is breathing fire. When you see him come up, it's... Hello, my name is Bruno. I'm in the White Dragon from Brazil. He's kind of like the Hulk. You hit him, that gives him extra power. Always brings the action, always brings the power. Screaming everywhere he goes, in the pit. He's screaming, he gets hit, he is screaming. I like to use pit fire. <laughs> Bruno fired up. Everybody who faces Bruno as is, is having a hard time. Oh. I'm ready for everybody. Let's see if the dragon's gonna eat again and stay hungry. He's more used to the pit. The guy really knows this rule set. He knows how to get that win. He's one of the most experienced guys, but I've been fighting everybody. The biggest strength that I bring to this fight, it's my, my mind. mind. I think my mind is a weapon. No matter what's happening inside the pit, no matter how bad I look, I'm having fun. When I enter the fight, I like to feel happy. And this fight, I want to finish my knockout. Okay, let's have fun. We have two very stereotypically Brazilian happy life fighters. Brazilians are fighters by nature. You can expect lack of aggression on this fight. They are fearless, relentless, and they go forward, and they want to finish their opponent. Nobody's going to back up. I fight for knockout every time. And this fight is not different. I'm just ready to knock him out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next bout. It is a lightweight contest. Our first competitor, Fighting out of the blue corner, representing Brazil, he is Bruno the Tiger Souza. So we welcome back to the pit now, Bruno the Tiger Souza. He's looking to rebound off a loss to former lightweight champion Edgar Scrivers. That was back in October. Of course, when he faced Magic uh, Turchak back at KC35 in August, he looked uh, very, very impressive indeed. He's brought a really interesting uh, in-and-out attacking game to this one and a really nice vibe. He's just a, a happy-go-lucky guy. He absolutely loves what he does. It's his entire, uh, you know, life. And he said he's had a fantastic weight cut. Really looking forward uh, to this uh, type of fight tonight. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner and also representing Brazil, he is Bruno the White Dragon, Assis! So this is Bruno Assis, he is also hailing from Brazil. His last fight, he dropped a uh, decision loss to Gabriel Varga, which is... Uh, no, uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Gabriel Vargas, one of the most technically complete fighters in this division. He's had some good matches against uh, Vitaly Sertan and Jesus Lopez, of course, also fought for the belt against Edgar Scrivens. Taylor take for this one, Bruno the Tiger Souza, 27 years old, that one and one record. Five foot eight coming into this lightweight contest. And a pretty even match up here in terms of stats. Bruno Assis, you see that huge record. He's had a, a lot of experience here at Karate Combat Fighter. We're very familiar with. Dyed his hair white for this one to really get in his white dragon persona. Hits with a lot of power. Definitely looking to get stuck in on the inside. They're playing around here. He's throwing the power. All right, yeah, fighters, like it is that time. Yeah, Bruno was the time to enter. He dodged it. Yeah. Dang Wayne it. Spinola, your referee for this contest. And Karate Combat 38 is powered. Ready? By Hadar. Out of each other. You ready, sir? You ready? Fight! White pants for Souza, black pants for Assis, and Souza pressuring Ooh. early. 
Good leg kick from Bruno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the way you're looking at me. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yeah, that's the funniest part of it. Well, Souza motioning down at the feet. Now starting to try and em employ the range game with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice jab. Yeah. Nice jab Covered from Assis. Yeah, did cover a lot of range forward. Ooh. 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 Oh. Ooh, that was a power kick to the body. As he yeah, said, he took a lot away from his oh, training nice. at Team Alpha Male. Just having the, the level of competition <laughs> there, it's really boosted uh, his confidence. Being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the, the more complete fighters there. Oh, again, trying to land that power body shot. Souza gains with chip, and he gets his leg kicked out and tapped in the face on the back end. <laughs> and a smile at him. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was very nice, cute. Right? Ooh. Thought we were going to get some uh, kickboxer action there, just trade the, the body shot kicks over and over. <laughs> he, he was already doing that when he came up. Right? Yeah. That was like he was blind, right? I couldn't see. Right. Yeah. I like the movement from Souza though, the in and out. He's staying on his toes. Switching sides as well. Nice Chopping, low calf yeah. kick from Assis. Chopping kick oh, from Assis again to the body. That body kick, man, from, from Assis just looks brutal, even mm. more blocking it. Yeah, and he, Souza's having to switch stance a few times here. He's had his leg kicked out when he's come forward and put that right leg forward. And there's oh. a good knees, but... Oh, you oh. <laughs> wow. Well, Reaction was on point. It's interesting. You're allowed to pull into the knee, but you've got to let go at the moment the knee hits. And I'm not entirely sure that Bruno Assis did, in fact, do that. So we'll see how that plays out as the fight moves on. It fired Sozo up, I tell you that. Oh, nice. Oh. Well, it's Assis who gets backed up, but he looked like he ate uh, a couple of shots. Wow, guys. Nice this one. Knee. Great. No, back it. up, back up, back Love up. Love the work rate from both Fight. fighters here. This is a three-round fight, not a, not a five-round fight like we're going to see in our main event coming up next. Nice. That's what I like to do also when I miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just add a sidekick. Why Yoko not? Giddy. Oh, Ooh, and that nice. was a lovely knee yes. from Souza. Landed clean, That's trading second. in the pocket. Both of them. Oh, landed let's go. Oh, oh, what a kick from Bruno Assis. Dude, he is repeatedly great. He's t repeatedly taking the legs out here. But he looks completely different, right? He yeah. looks really oh, yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Bruno Assis. Yeah. Amazing. He's looking really clean. fight so far, man. And Both of these guys. feel like he's pulling Souza into this yeah. firefight that Souza's not usually there for. Yeah. But the short locus to the calves, I mean, everything is working for him. Talk us through the replays here, guys. There you see every time. Boom. And look at that hand. Takes the shot with a smile on his face. And, and, and they're both laughing and smiling at each other the whole time. They know each other very well. I mean, I want to see that uh, <laughs> last kick. I mean, look, he didn't, re he didn't no. release the plum clinch on the knees, so yeah. those were illegal knees. The referee's going to have to watch that. Rich hand. And this was oh, a, yeah. yeah. The rich hands are, are, I mean, I've seen so many guys get put away with rich hands. Yeah, but it's a way better setup for a cross because it's a longer punch. Yeah. Lovely kick, and I think this is what we're going to see at the end here. Sousa pushing forward and just Look gets planted. Wow. Okay, ready, gentlemen? Fight. Really, really fun first round. Oh, good. man. Immediately. Good right hand. <laughs> yeah. Good right hand from Assis. Oh, oh little staggered switch step. Join us on Twitter, of course, at Karate Combat. If you want to get involved on social media, find us on all, and every out. and all platform. Good Thank you for joining us here in uh, Miami, Florida. Wow, it's everything it connects. Yes. Yeah, That's the body kick right there. If you notice, it's uh, Souza dropping that, that left hand down a little bit lower every time Assis throws that back oh, leg round. Oh, kick. Ooh, again, as soon as he gets reflexes. Stop! Break clean. Dude, his reflexes are off the chart, man. Break. Gotta watch out. That was a big one. Yeah, and he's switching oh, stance nice again. Bruno, uh, from, uh, I'm Shuzo. waiting for Assis to go to that lead leg once more. 
Well, now back to orthodox for Souza. Let's see how the cardio is for Assis, though. He doesn't look like he's breathing heavy. Both these guys are in great shape. Yep. But that roundhouse kick from, from Assis is definitely doing damage to, to um, Souza's left arm. Souza trained for five rounds, right? So he knows he can go five rounds. But Assis never saw him tired, so. Oh. Big wheel kick goes awry. I love that. Oh, oh man. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, he told Souza. One shot on the ground. Souza's going to. No way, he's going to invert and Deep hide up. his head. <laughs> he's going to get some time to recover, but that was two clean shots. Fight. Still got a minute left in this second round. Wow, nice. Oh, shots over the top. The difference is in the pocket. Ooh. Oh, again, the left hand from Assis. Oof. Man. These are just repeatedly landing here. Oh, oh wow. He's still everything throwing everything into sink. them. The difference is one Bruno in the pocket keeps his hands up, the other one keeps his hands down. Yeah, Souza has uh, got a chin on him, that's for sure. Oh, oh spinning back fish that just hurt him. skims the head. Yeah. Souza getting backed up again. That hurt him. Yep. Now's the time to jump. Now's the time to get on him. 22 seconds. Yeah. You've got to wonder, is Souza going to go and make it out of this round? And Ooh, again. again. Oh, oh that follow-up left hook. Gets him with the, with the 540. Whoa, that Winging everything plant. into it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Well, Man, end of the what? second oh, round. Wow. wow. What a I fight. Love it. Souza is still wobbly on his feet. And the Brazilians in the crowd, I think, are a little bit, well, I was going to say muted, but actually there's, they're both Brazilian, so I take that back entirely. <laughs> Brazil's going to win anyway. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. But this, this reflex, is, everything is on. Look at this. I want to see, like, there was a really big left hook that landed, a couple of them, actually. When he threw Ooh. the back fist and then added a left hook, that was Ooh, nice. There, look at there's this. a right that dropped him. Right on the button. Boom, oh. and then, oh yeah, he does that again, and then he adds a left hook. I mean, he's finding his target. Oh, every time, every time. Well, I guess training at Alpha Mill really <laughs> did. I mean, listen, he's good. Yes. But we never saw this, right? This no, this is, this is a uh, much better fight than we've seen from him yep. before. Alfie. Alfie. Now I want to see, I want to see this round. Bruno fight Screamers again. Oh, oh yes. yeah. I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right, of course, guys, no disrespect to Bruno Sousa. We've got, we've got uh, three minutes left here, but it's fair to say he's, he's on the back foot and he's, he's got three minutes left to probably pull this back. And he's got the skill to do it. He just needs to really watch out. And I'm talking about uh, Sousa. Nice check. Nice check for the, with, the, with the shin. Oh, that right. right. Right hook from Assis. Oh, good work That's from Souza. He yep. found the mark. He found it too. Again, though, Assis is attacking low on that lead leg. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> left hook. Jeez. Same time. Oh. Oh, nice. Right up the cross. I uh, hope you're enjoying the pit environment we have here in Miami. Again, get involved on social oh. media, hashtag KC38. Of course, head to karate.com to stay on top of everything. Karate combat. Souza's tried that jumping knee a few times now. Phil will spin back that's coming. Ah, that rib. He's constantly hunting. Nice counter. <laughs> he doesn't leave anything unanswered. See? Kevin. Yeah, he's wow. fi firing back every wow. time. Yep. Oh, look at that again. I mean, he did eat a shot there, but uh, certainly gave one out. Oh, both of them. Oh, nice body shot there. Good head movement from Assis and uh, Souza. 
Oh, oh. That, that, the counter is it, there every that's time. Every time. Oh. Good timing again. Oh, that was nice, too. That's an album for stop, sure. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Disrespect the legs, pull to the side. <laughs> Final minute here. Ready? He looked at the clock. Yep. Assisted. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's oh, tall yeah. because both these guys would be would be looking at uh, two losses in a row if they were to lose this bout. Good shot from Souza. He's coming forward now. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, oh nice. Oh, he has, oh head kick. Assis is trying to tie up there. The corner are calling him to circle out. Oh, oh man. man, everything he has is back. Dying seconds here again, oh, the jumping knee. Look at that. Souza's got one last shot. Wow, <laughs> that is gonna do it. What a fight for Bruno Assis and Bruno Souza. Wow. You can't do nothing but clap to that performance from both guys. It's, 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 it's the best one we have for tonight, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. fight right tonight right so far, for sure. The resilience, the resilience from uh, both guys, man. Taking shots and kept going. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. The, the crowd are asking for one more round, but that's really I only if so. it's genuinely close, and I don't think it was as no. close as that would warrant. I think we're probably all in agreement we're going to see Bruno Assis take this one. I yes. So. Yes. Because he didn't, he answered everything. everything. Even when he got hit hard, he countered. He right, counted. there, was, there he weren't counted. really many chances where one he took round. that and didn't dole any out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One more we're going one more round. round. This is wild. We are? Yeah. <laughs> Now this is this yeah, is where we might too, see a difference here because uh, so Assis that last that last round looked a little fatigued. Yep. He tried for five yeah. rounds. Yes. I, I'm really gonna want to see the judges' scorecards yeah. to see how they saw it because yeah. I I don't think it was that uh, that close. But at the end of the day, that that's what. Nope. That's what they've decided and that's what we're gonna get. The crowd, of course, are gonna love it as are we. <laughs> So, final three minutes, round number four. Bruno Assis and Bruno Souza. I wonder if Souza's got the momentum a little bit here. Woo! Just for the fatigue with Assis. And he, he started landing those uppercuts. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, expect a continuation of that. Souza looking the fresher of the two at the moment. Landing a good body shot. Oh. oh. Assis uh, is just going to remind him pretty quickly that he's uh, he's got some accurate and fast hands. He's got all hard. Both these guys. Nice. Oh, nice uppercut from Assis. Oh man, Souza coming back with a vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, Souza pressuring here, backing Assis up in the corner. Oh, man, he's going. Yeah, he's still throwing everything he's got into these. Souza moving deftly out of the way. Oh, we got to watch out for that single kick. It's a nice call by Souza. It's very rare we get two fourth rounds in a uh, in one fight card. It's a it's a, a trigger that happens if uh, you get uh, draw oh. fights and the, they decide they can't quite lean one way or the other. They have an optional box to tick for a fourth round if they think it warrants it. Oh, Ooh. again, cross and then the hook landed. Oh, that body. Ooh. Those are killer. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look at the, show. the damage on Aziz's body we're starting to see now. You have Aziz backing up. He's the one backing up this round. Uh-oh. Yeah, Souza landing. That's two in a row. There's oh, again oh, the knee lands, and Aziz says no. Oh, the no-look shot. 45 seconds. Here's an anxious 45 seconds for both of these guys. Oh, oh, Capoeira kick tried. Oh, 
going to go straight into a uh, leg entanglement. <laughs> Not legal. Really does just force the action to come immediately back to the feet. Final 20 seconds. Assis pressing forward. Again looking for it. 10 seconds left here. Last exchange in the middle. Assis pressuring. And Souza's going to get the last word with the outside trip. And they both smile, raise their hands. What a fantastic fight. That was great. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that fourth round. Give us your final opinion. Well, before, I thought that Aziz got it. I and did the as final well. Round, I believe that shows us. Especially after dropping him a few times yeah. in that second round. The knee to the body that was gold. Oh. The way he did that. And for, for Aziz to keep on going, I mean, I mean, he was tired in the third round. Yep. But, and then he, this is all hard what he did. That's, that shows what real, what a real fighter he is. I love that. Let's take a look at the replays. This oh, was a big wow. knee Beautiful. from Souza. Yeah, that was probably the most significant moment of that fourth round. Yeah, and that again, the overhand landed. Yeah, that got him to fight. I agree. Well, we're going to go get a judge's decision here. Give it up for both of these competitors. The Battle of the Brunos lived up to the billing. But there can only be one winner. He hails out of the blue corner. Bruno the Tiger Souza. So your winner, Bruno the Tiger Souza, after a bludgeoning four rounds here. He's going to head up pit side and get a word with Layla. Souza, congratulations. Now, we saw you find success mostly in that third round. When they called for the fourth, were you pleased that you were going to carry that momentum or did exhaustion start to set in? No, no, I was actually fresher in the third. As you can see, I'm a slow starter. I paid for three rounds. It's just too short for me. I need five round fight, maybe a six round fight. Wait, wait, wait. That is that guy right here. He called himself the pit bull. For me, he's a chihuahua. The tiger's coming for you, Luis. The tiger's fucking coming for you. Oh, so there's the question. A win over Estes is a very powerful message to send to the entire division. What's next for you? I win the belt. That's the goal. I'm a world champion, the best in the world, you know? Bruno surprised me a little bit. He's faster than I was expecting. He's longer than I was expecting. I took a little bit longer to figure that out. But five round fight, that's fight for me, you know? And I'm just ready. The first couple of rounds, we found you sort of looking to find your range and find your place. Now, do we gonna see a change in you finding that place in the first and second? Yo, yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. Wait, your time's gonna come. Let me finish right here. So uh, yeah, uh, that guy cannot take my pace. I'm just too quick for him. I'm gonna kill that. Can you see who's across? Oh, there's a story to come. We'll follow him there, congrats. That fight was something very, very special. You know, we human beings have a hard time explaining complex things. Art, sports, politics, everything, with our rudimentary language. So we create narratives. 
Bruno Souza is the flowy one. Bruno Assis is the aggressive one. But when we simplify complex things like that, we do not tell the whole story. Assis in this fight was subtle and sophisticated through the first half, and Bruno was the aggressive, ferocious one in the second half. <laughs> Ultimately, they gave us a wonderful fight. The correct man won, but both men should proudly keep and wear the name of Bruno because they gave us just a fantastic fight. Thank you, Robin. That was uh, that was absolutely a fantastic fight. Let's wrap this one up, gents, as we take a look at uh, the last of our fight replays. Bas, give us your thoughts, because it was a tale of two halves. Um, yep. You know, we thought Assis did potentially enough at the start. Yeah, that's what I thought also. And then, you know, if you look, uh, listen to Sosa, he says I, had, I needed three runs to figure him out. So he kind of knew also that he was just landing constantly. Everything that when he got hit, he always answered back and everything was on the money. I think he did a great job. And for Sousa, you know, that's stamina, you know, to do this in the, uh, in the yep. sudden death round, so to say. That's, yeah, that's why he won the fight now at the very end. But, yeah. And that's one of the things. You always have to prepare for championship rounds for something just like this. You have to be prepared for that fourth round. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's, let's talk about the, the gutsiness, the chin, the guile of Bruno Souza. He stuck in there. He landed his shots. He came back. He figured him out, and he got the win. And still kept that same bounce as he did in the first round, in the in the fourth. Yeah, absolutely in shape. I mean, look, he's called out uh, Luis Rocha. That's Woo. a that's a fun, fun fight. <laughs> that's a real fun fight. And you know, if he gets uh, pushes into the championship rounds, that's what you want to do with Rocha because he's got a lot of muscle, and he might hopefully for him run start running out of gas in the later rounds. But uh, boy, if you're going to get caught because he can hit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You want to talk power? That's uh, that's our champ. Uh, lots more to look forward to. We've got our main event coming up very shortly. Why don't you at home go ahead and take a look at uh, an introduction to crypto Twitter. I've been training my whole life for this moment. Getting my body ready. Getting my mind ready. And today, the final piece of the puzzle falls into place. Karate Combat fans, I am with self-proclaimed crypto genius over here, Gabriel Haynes. Please, tell me what you're doing here tonight, other than, of course, starting shit with Mike Malley. I'm here to fuck some shit up, yeah! But other than that, Karate Combat is getting ready to introduce another exciting layer, not in, into their whole karate combat atmosphere not only do they have the best combat sports in america they're introducing a crypto layer which is going to allow the fans to engage directly with the sport in a way that was not possible before and it's super exciting and karate combat is doing it all very futuristic and this is going to be very big for the future of sports so tell me about the app launch coming up in may the app launch is coming up in May, and that is when the token is coming out, and the token is going to allow you to vote on your favorite fighters, and you will be able to win some additional karate token if your fighter wins. And what's cool about it is no loss. So if you vote and your fighter loses, you don't lose any tokens. You can only win. Up only, baby. Win-win situations. I know a lot of people in here would definitely vote on this main event tonight. And for more on this main event, check out this preview. We're gonna have Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. Both these guys fought each other before. Oh, oh, the face, wheel kick to the head. Ross Levine finished Igor de Castaneda with a beautiful kick. Igor Castaneda unhappy with the decision. I hit him with a spinning axe kick and my heel hurts. 
he was hurt. Para mí yo hubiese seguido. He should be very happy that he's healthy. Perhaps he could have been given a bit more time. Claro que quiero un rematch. Years pass since then. These guys are new fighters. We have a new middleweight champion, Ross Levine. I'm here to fight everybody. I'm going to wipe the entire division clean. This night, the best fighter in the division, Igor de Castañeda, the Iberian Bull. Ross Levine, you might be looking at a rematch, my friend. The fans, us, we all wanted to see this fight, and that's why this was the fight for us to make. I'm here, I'm ready, and we're going to get after it again. Ross, I'm coming. Oh, it is main event time here at Karate Combat 38. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we are live from Miami, Florida, and we have got a fantastic championship bout coming up here. It is our middleweight champion, Ross Levine, taking on the challenger in a rematch, Igor de Castaneda. And Bass will start with the champion. Uh, incredibly complete fighter is Ross Levine. He can do everything. And we mentioned it a little bit earlier. He's had 25 weeks yep. to do nothing but think about his next fight. And he spent those 25 weeks, he said he came in, uh, comes in very well prepared. He also switched the southpaw stance. He said, I wanted to get very comfortable in the southpaw stance. He said, I think I'm there. So now he's going to start switching. He's a switch hitter, as they call it. He might throw in some takedowns as well. Uh, and probably let's uh, Igor blow off some steam in the first round since he's a heavy hitter, power hitter, and he says he wears himself out. Yeah, I mean, when we think about Ross Levine, you know, he's he's uh, incredibly well educated in, in the fitness game, the sport game, the psychology game. Uh, you know, he, he really understands where he needs to focus and improve and how to approach each bout. You know, when you saw the finish, the way he let it uppercut and then that spinning kick, and if you see the speed on it and the accuracy, I mean, this is... In just to wrap something up like that, that's a highlight reel, and he's doing it on the money, on the button, he's, he's, he's got it all. Yeah, I mean, he's got viral, uh, you know, highlight knockouts going back years. Uh, so extremely worthy champion, of course. Uh, Wonderboy, the challenger tonight, Igor de Castaneda. Uh, you know, he lost to Ross Levine, he came, he bounced back, very, very strong, yes. very, very powerful. Um, but, you know, fighting a rematch is always an interesting thing. Oh, I know, but after coming off to that big win and big knockout his last fight, he's done all kinds of really cool stuff he's changed in his camp i mean he's added swimming for his stamina he's worked with hector, hector lumbar who is a hard-hitting mamma jamma to work on his boxing and takedowns the guy is more than ready yeah and the, the cardio is something that he particularly said and was aware of that he needed to work on i mean you know these title fights it's five threes and yep. we know it can potentially go a sixth we've seen it happen before in title fights and you cannot be gassed at the end. No, and uh, Ross said it. He says, you know, it, it, if you go into the championships round, he said he never fought five rounds. And every fight I've seen him fight, he says he's getting tired at the end. But, like you said already, Igor knows. And he's going to he's going to come in with the boat of the stamina, so let's see what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really interesting uh, clash here. Let's go ahead for one more time. Ask Robin Black for your thoughts, sir. Guys, after a phenomenal night of fights. Who's ready for the main event? I said, who's ready for the main event? All right, let's break this one down. We are looking at a rematch for the Karate Combat middleweight belt, and I've taken the liberty to put some video together for you to take a look. Now, Igor was known first for some of his viral knockouts, and we'll take a look back at one of these right here. Bink, ridge hand, goes wide. What he does is he draws the right hand of his opponent, gets his head off the line, under it, even if he takes the a glancing shot, he gets the ridge hand in. What did Ross Levine do? He used it against him, right there. You see, he draws the right hand out, Bink, lands the spinning axe kick. Watch right here, he'll draw that powerful right hand of Igor, right here, moves out of the way, slides back, and then hits him with the right hook, Bink. That's what began it. As he's now throwing the kick, he's either gonna land it or make his man retreat, falls back into the pit wall. There's that extra moment he's gotta get straight. And during that moment, Ross unleashes this, the spinning ax kick all the way up and around, bink. That was the end of that fight. But right there, one more look at it. But Igor has changed since that night, bink. Right there, Ross Levine. Igor has changed. And in his last bink, in his last performance, that's the same thing, but now he goes jab to the body, drawing the right hand, and look how much tighter and shorter and in tight he is when he lands it on the chin. Igor has changed, Ross Levine has changed. This is a different fight, 
And who's ready for the main event? I said, who's ready for the main event? Enjoy the hostilities, my friends. Hit me with the head to head. Ross Levine versus Igor de Castaneda. These guys fought before. And now we have a title fight. And the story continues. And no! I feel like a lot of times when you see champions, they hold so tightly that world title. So in my opinion, I'm not defending my title. I'm winning another title. I'm still on the hunt. Ross Levine is special. This guy had so many kickboxing matches, karate matches, so many titles in different organizations. In season three, he proved that he belongs here. Season four came, we gave him a tough fight. Oh, oh, that's how he has to face spinning wheel kick to the head. Mm -hmm. The Castaneda is not agreeing with the stoppage. I hit him with a spinning axe kick and my heel hurts. He was very hurt. Tuvieron muy pronto. Claro que quiero un rematch. Igor's been with us since the league existed. Made his mark already in a hit a few times. Oh! We have someone watching your fight very closely. His name is Ross Levine. Get in, Ross Levine. How do you respond to that? We're gonna find out. Hey, I'm gonna wipe the entire division clean. Fighter in the division, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian Bull. Ron Dorados, sueño de del Igor de 12 años. Lo tengo al alcance de la mano y voy a dar todo de mí para lograrlo y traerlo para España. I'm not always a huge fan of rematches, but you know, you're the champion, you don't get to choose who's next, so that's what we're going to do. Eh, se paró muy rápido ese combate, así que no sé por qué dice que no tiene que dar revancha. Now it's just an opportunity for us to go in and again, whenever the opportunity presents itself, put him away. Por otra vez, sinceramente. But if he's still focused on what happened in that last fight, then he's in a lot of danger moving forward. Me faltó respeto, ahora se lo voy a faltar yo. Break him down, let him self-destruct, and then we'll take him out. I sueño con ese cao. Creo que puedo hacerlo. I'm going to be hard to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the main event. It is a middleweight contest. Our first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner, hails from Spain. He is the Iberian Bull, <laughs> Igor de Castaneda! So we welcome at first the challenger from Spain, the Iberian Bull, Igor de Castaneda, of course, coming off that massive knockout win versus Franklin Mina. He said he's got no injuries, he's in perfect condition. And he is ready to move from three to five rounds here tonight. And his opponent, fighting tonight out of the red corner, he represents the United States. Welcome, Ross Turbo Levine! Welcome to the middleweight champion, Turbo Ross Levine. Of course, he won that belt versus Shaheen Atimov. There you go. Join us on social media, Karate Combat. Show us a fight to remember. Hashtag KC38. Get involved. June 25th, 2022 was the last time Ross Levine entered the Karate Combat pit. And when I tell you he has been chomping at the bit, that is an understatement. <laughs> uh, he's been angling for a fight every single show we've had since. Tail of the tape here, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian Bull, 35 years old. Mixed record coming into this one, but he is coming off that fantastic knockout. He's also got a couple of others, uh, like over the likes of George Perez. Champion Ross Levine, in impeccable shape as always. He is undefeated here, wins over Andre Grinovich, the win over Igor de Castaneda, and of course Shaheen Atomov as well. 
He said he felt the first time out, he took away the will from Igor de Castaneda. And he said he can push and push and wear the opponent down. He's going to do that again tonight. And now what we've all been waiting for, fighters, it's now time to enter the pit. Right. Your referee for this one is Mark Goddard. Remember, download the free Karate Combat app on May 10th. Vote on your favorite fighters. Play to win more karate tokens. Up only gaming. There is no purchase required. <laughs> I love the intimidation yeah, is, from what are you both. Say? Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, baby. Right. Ross Levine, the champion black pants. Ooh. Igor Decastinator in the white pants. And straight out to it. Five three-minute rounds if they need them. Josh Palmer, Bass Root, and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson pit side here for you tonight in Miami. Nice check from Ross. Yeah, that was a solid. He uh, smiled at the end of that. He knew that one stung. Yep. Took that chin out. Constantly cutting him off. Yeah, champion with the center of the pit at the moment. A lot of feints, a lot of fast twitch. Oh, yeah. At this level, every little check. movement that you make could be, you know, taken advantage of. So yeah. these guys are definitely on par. You see Levine moving to Southpaw here. He said that's one of the things that they've worked on these last 29 weeks is actually getting a really good, complete set of techniques from Southpaw. Playing Muay Thai, that's what he said. Flipped it around. Still cagey here, trying to figure out the timing. The Castaneda missing early. Oh, that's a good right hand, though. Yeah. Made the champion think. Uh, we know that he cannot be proud. Well, that's it. Right I mean, the, <laughs> you can't play games with someone with that much power. You've got to be <laughs> a little bit wary. Guys like that, you know, because they landed over and over again, they know how to land it. And he's got five rounds to do it. So you cannot be off guard for a freaking second here. Again, Le Levine's, you know, he can grind, he can wear fighters down. He said it's the constant pressure and yes. making them think that, that does it. And we're, we're starting to see that already. Was what it is, he doesn't allow his opponent to back off and rest. He's, he's always a presence in front of them, which keeps them on guard, and that's exhausting. Keeps them fainting, keeps them reacting to little things here and there. Nice right hand from can't, can't breathe De nice and freely because he's constantly under pressure. Right. You know, it's beautiful. A little poke, a little poke. Switching to Southpaw again. Good shots from De Castaneda, though. Yeah, yeah. And he's calling uh, Levine on, but he's getting backed up here. And we know Levine is deadly if he can force oh. the opponent against the, the pit that wall. Fast. That was a fast kick. Very close. You know, the, the, short, the slightly extended amount of time it takes for someone to get up off the pit wall, Levine knows he can exploit that with the big power techniques. The calmness of Ross yes, it's a... is, is very interesting. I love it. Yeah, I mean, this is the type of fight where, you know, five rounds, they can afford to be a bit patient at the start. Yes. You know, Levine knows he wants to go to championship rounds. And that is the first one in the books. Let's take a look at some of the replays here, and that was a good shot from De Castaneda. Yeah, De Castaneda, he also said in the training, he, he worked on his emotions. And because he knows, of course, it's five rounds, and normally he throws out a lot of power. We were talking about it in the opening of the fight. So, uh, and he's showing it. Yes. He's, uh, he's holding back, being relaxed, waiting, but trying to find a hole in uh, Levine's game, right? It's, uh, <laughs> And then it's hard. The Every movement that Ross makes so, is so calculative, you know what I'm saying? The flinches, getting his opponent to lean in with the jab and then and then countering back with that lead leg round kick to the yeah, body. It's slow. It's slow. Interestingly, it's neither one of them, taking, slower the, every round. Neither one of them taking the stool here in the corner. They're both playing the gamesmanship. Levine's like, I'm not touching gloves. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once is, once is enough, I think, in the champion's mind. Yeah. 
He's here to work. Plus, he's just saw the, the, the video and he goes, I don't like him. He said, so he goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not like each other. The good thing is after this is saddled, it's saddled. Yep. That's always in fighting. Unless we go end up one-on-one and, one and have to run it back for a third. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yep. If we're going to that early, we're getting Again, twitches and feints from Levine. Big, fast wheel kick from the Spaniard. Uh, expect something like that back. Most of uh, monkey see, monkey do, right? Bait it out, yes. Yep. Good jab. Oh, that was a big wide hand. Okay, he slipped it, but gotta watch out for that power. Oh, yeah. If you notice that um, um, De Castaneda is not looping that right hand anymore, mm -hmm. it's going straight down the pipe. Yeah, work on it. Harder to counter, harder to counter. And that was also a jab to the body with a hook to the top. Right. He starts throwing combinations together. That together with his incredible heart makes him a dangerous fighter. How do you feel about the, the volume of offense from the champion so far? Oh, I love it, man. I love it. Every time he takes a step in, uh, Ross is throwing that kick to the body. But the countering ability, I think, is where he's going to be more successful because I know De Castaneda has got the longer reach. You got to hit him before he brings his hands back. So again, De Castaneda having to be on the back foot a little bit, but that's good work to push the champ back. The fainting, the little movements. Body shot. As he was leaning back. Yep. He sees those things. Nice job there by Castaneda. That jab was nice. About a minute left here in this second round. Nice knee. Good body kick on the end. Look at him. He's cutting off the pit. Yes. I love that. That's what I love about it. He goes, to, goes the other way, Ross switches sides and says, okay, I can move this way too. Yeah. He's putting the hands out left and right, the distractions, the little fans. Yeah. Ooh, nice, a beautiful angle change. On a relaxed gap as well. Big ground and pound from Levine. A little half a step angle change set him up perfectly for that low path kick. Yeah, very, very clean indeed. Final 10 seconds here. That's going to do it for this one. <laughs> see if we can yeah, listen like into the corners it. here. Those desperation things are coming out now, right? Slow down your breathing for a second. That calf kick is there too, right? He's a come in. Jake, what are you seeing? Yeah. So we got a little response. You touch, you pull, he went big. That's when you're going to find that big kick. You want to touch and pull, okay, the kick is going to dip. In and out of the So interestingly, the corner the of Ross Levine saying to him the desperation things are starting yeah. to come out. Do you feel like that's the case side. for uh, Igor de Castaneda? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know. Yet. Yep. Nope. Not okay. yet, not yet. He's going to have to do a little bit more to bring that out of him, but he's keeping his calm. He's, he's looking much better than the first time they fought. That's yeah. for sure. So straight into the third round here. Ooh, good counter jab by Ross Levine. Yeah, Levine working that jab. Switching to southpaw here. Hands dropping. Ooh, the movement's a little different from Ross this round. He's on his toes a little more. Yes, like he said, uh, decided to start fighting now almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always an interesting tactic because you, you take too long to settle into the fight Ooh. and you give up a couple of rounds early by the small margins. You, you're giving yourself a, a bit of a deficit, but it's yes. very, very close through the first six minutes. That was a greatly timed left hand, lunging yeah. left hand by Ross Levine. Oh, look at that. Just looking to pull the guard away. Control the whole time. I feel like Ross is trying to draw out that right hand to counter. Oh, that, oh. <laughs> oh. And he thinks he's taking, I mean, he said to us, you know, he was very aware he took his will. 
which I thought was an interesting uh, bit of gamesmanship from Ross. Oh, that low cat kick. Woo. That makes me hurt. <laughs> oh, and he's got him backed up. Oh, oh big strike good. to the body. Oh, what is that? Stop, stop, Pushing stop, stop. the head, leg to the side and go with the body shot. Coaches are saying pressure, pressure, pressure. Well, that's it. You know, we, we spoke at length with him about putting someone back on the wall and what an opportunity it was. Oh, he had the big left. And that has what ended this ball. one. Oh, Ross geez. Levine remains wow. the karate combat middleweight champion. Wow. wow. Bro, that was the fastest counter. It was like he knew exactly Andre, what he was doing. That was last time with the uppercut too. It was so fast. It's like you said, it was almost like he suddenly decided to stop fighting. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally how it came out, right? He says, okay, this is what it is to get it over with. And Igor de Castaneda Oy. is still stretched out against the wall here. He's going to get up oh, slowly. Quick, oh, Nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was good, dude. Unbelievable. <laughs> Getting some words wow. from the champion, Ross Levine. I mean, look, I'm sure Layla will ask him about it. That's 29 weeks of pent-up energy yeah, yeah, coming yeah, out yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Everything was so calculative during, leading up to this point right now. He knew he could take it away in this round. You could tell it by the way yeah. he moved, the way he came out. Yep. Had a little more pep it in his was, step. It was just more decisive, more, yeah. you know, more vicious. First two rounds, he just kind of felt him, it felt him. Up. Just felt him out a little bit. You know, that's all he needed to calculate and, and to kind of, you know, figure out what he needed to do, calculated it up, and execute. You said uh, it when he came out. He says, we looks completely different. Yes. You know, it's, it's like, okay. Do it. Scary reflexes. Woo. So Ross Levine puts an exclamation point. Woo. On his second bout with Igor de Castaneda. Looking forward to seeing the replays. Oh, yeah, Let's have yeah. a look here. Boom, Good liver shot. Good liver shot. Oh. That was beautiful. Boom. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he knew. He, he just walked it out. Boom. Boom. Stiff leg. So right across the chin. Oh, yeah. Right across the chin. <laughs> it goes, whatever. He made sure that he was not getting up from that one. Yeah, walk off, knockout as you like it. Clean, clean left hook. Look at that. As the hands drop to come in, he just he beat him to the punch. Oh, he did. What a reaction. He did. What I love is the IQ that Ross has. Not only that, but the experience this guy has had in the martial arts. Have you ever sparred one of those guys? It's almost like they know what you're going to do before you do oh, it. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. Perfect right there. He read him like a book. Yep. Let's go ahead and get the champion's hand raised one more time. Our winner by knockout out of the red corner, Ross Turbo Levine. Ross Levine gets his big gold belt once again from our league president, Adam Kovac. Who's going to beat him? Uh, it's tough. Dude, it's, tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. That's amazing. Yeah, well, it's going to have to be some serious 185, uh, but uh, we will do our best to find them for you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's going to head down into the center of the pits. Ross, congratulations. So we've put a few disputes to bed today, haven't we? I heard you just pointing at the camera there. Tell us, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, this is my house. They're, I'm too much for these guys. I'm so far ahead. I'm so far ahead, and I'm getting so much better. They're, you guys are only seeing a piece of what I'm capable of. Now, you're saying you're so far ahead, and we've only seen a piece, but that was actually really evident to us in the first round. You started dropping your hands. Were you dropping them in, in purposely to bait him in for the counter, or because this is just too easy for you? No, 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 nothing we do in here is easy. And anybody that steps in the pit is an absolute warrior. There, there's nothing against him at all. He's got great coaches. His head coach is an awesome K1 champion, and he does his homework, but can't change your DNA. And so what does the future hold for you? Well, you know, I was hoping for a couple different outcomes tonight to kind of see where the pieces fall, but uh, Coach, uh, boss, Adam, I might be on the shelf for a little bit because we need some more depth in this division, but middleweights, Bring it to karate combat. If you like to strike, let's get in here, right? We need more people in here. But before I say anything else, the one person, 
the one person I absolutely need to thank over anything. My wife is I've been doing this. I thought I was going to fight in December. Then I thought January, February, and then now we're here at the end of the end of March, early April, April 1st. Um, she, she missed uh, Christmas, New Year's. We got a little bit of Valentine's Day. We got a couple of dates coming, huh? All right, I love you so much. Thank you for being the absolute rock in my life. Thank you so much. Andrew, happy birthday. Where's my boy? Happy birthday. Josh, congrats on your baby. I love everybody. Brooklyn, stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, your middleweight champion, Ross Levine. That was not a one-punch knockout. I mean, I know, you saw it with your eyes. You threw the left hook, and the man went down. But the story of that fight was not that punch. That was the consequence of the story of fight. Ross disassembled this man using mental pressure, mental pressure, that's what fatigued him. Then he continued to go to the body, the left hook to the body, drew his attention down, and then he slammed the door with the left knuckles. Ross is one of the great martial artists on planet Earth, and for all of us, it is an honor and a privilege to get to watch this man fight. Thank you, Ross Levine. Well, uh, thank you, Robin Black, and thank you, Ross Levine, for uh, a lovely highlight reel knockout there. Uh, Bass Wonderboy, give us your closing thoughts on the champion's performance. Uh, it's, it's like I'm thinking, who can beat this guy? Uh, I, I, he was complete total domination, total total control. Knew exactly what he was going to do, where the opponent was going to be. Uh, uh, he's he was out there <laughs> playing. He was out there having a good time, and you you could see it. Yep. When he got serious. He felt his opponent out first, second round, but when he started moving, when he started, the way he started bouncing, I knew it was going to be over. Do you think he needed those first two rounds to figure out, or do you think he wanted to try and just wear Castaneda out a little bit? No, what I think it is, it's, it was his opportunity to kind of fill out what has this guy been working on, what's in his head. So those little feints that you saw him do out there, he was calculating that. He knew what was coming. Every little feint told Ross Levine what the, uh, the Castaneda was thinking. Third round, he finally calculated it up and executed his finish. Yeah, we've had a good, look, that was a great fight. I, as you said, Bass, it's gonna be interesting to find who we can get for, for our champion, Ross Levine. I'm sure uh, Adam Kovac and the guys in the back office are gonna do their best to put that together. We've had a great night of fights here in Miami. Oh man, it was crazy. Yeah, we saw some crazy fights. I mean, this fight was unbelievable, but the, the Aziz, oh. the Brunos, that was an unbelievable by James fight of the Vick. night. He did nice. Melinda Fabian, I mean, she was walking it constantly coming forward. The new guy, Shazib. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, as well. And Hadrabayev as well. You know, Kelly really, James really Vick with that with that with the win tonight as well. Yeah, so a lot to a lot to build from for this yeah. event. We're of course building towards May the 20th. We're going to be back here in Miami, Florida. Join us for the next event. That, of course, is following the launch of our Karate token on May the 10th. Go ahead, hit up karate.com, get your allocation all for free. Up only gaming, no way to lose. Join us again next month for more Karate Combat. Whoop.